I start to stutter when I speak. She wants to stand in my knees, going, What's happening to me? In the dark, can you tell me what it means? I lay my head on my pillow, staring out the window. She wants to stop for a sign. It's the reason why. in my notebook, checking how my hair and my nails look, I feel myself in the zone, I get nervous when you go, so I say I'm not home, I see your face and I hear my favorite song, should I send an email at home, you're the number one topic on the phone, I wonder if you know, do you have a clue, I lay my head on my pillow, and you got me staring out the window, I'm sure the stars are outside, what's the reason why? almost forgot to add myself <laughs> hello 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 how is everybody doing i was back here dancing i almost forgot to add myself to the little chat y'all was gonna be looking at a blank screen <laughs> how is everybody doing thank you so much for being here almost 50 people in the spot already please hit the like button so we can get even more I'm so excited to get into this movie. Like there have been so many freaking opinions. Thank you to everybody who showed up, who saw the movie, haven't seen the movie, and are just indifferent about whether you want this to be a thing or not. And you tired of all things color purple. I appreciate it. Of course, I had to bring through a guest. I felt like had a whole, we, we had to come with receipts. <laughs> Cause if we're not gonna have receipts, then what are we here for? Before I bring him out and we get, you know, to what we came here to do, let me read a few comments and we're gonna go ahead and get started remember to hit that like button y'all fantasia got me got me feeling special i feel like we need to run that back even if we ain't looking at the color purple because i was feeling myself back here <laughs> let's see hello chat room hello the real cool thank you thank you so much for being here mac is here i already know how you feel about the movie mac but thank you so much for being here it's all love hello tony t ready for this me too me too me too uh candy loves to talk tv hello hello ma'am thank you so much for being here also beta is in the house hey what's up tg is always going to be here showing love thank you so much for being here i'm sure that remake ariel was pretty good in this yeah we, 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 gonna, we gonna talk about it we, we gonna talk about because y'all know i have my thoughts and <clears throat> my thoughts gonna be my thoughts no matter what who who said what when it, when they said it it's just gonna stay the same <laughs> Fantasia looked like she did great. So I'm assuming you have not seen it, Nicole. That's all right. We, we are here to break it down. Val is in the house. I'm so happy you're here as well. Hey, Tyra, YouTube doing its jobs today. Got my, no <laughs> got my notification. She got a notification, y'all. Y'all don't, don't even know. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here, Val. Okay, waiting room music, right? Movie Bay, y'all go check out Movie Bay. What do you like? You know, I was, I was, I almost forgot where I was for a second. Let's see. Uh, this is me watching the color purple, watching the review. I already know, Nikki, you ain't checking out nothing color purple. But now that we got all the pleasantries out the way, as soon as I bring this man to the screen, just take your butt on over there and subscribe to his channel and support. Because when you hear what he has to say, and I and I had to deter myself from watching his review because I want his little unsolicited opinion fresh right here with y'all. So I have no clue what he's going to say, but I'm sure it's going to be tasty. Welcome to the stage, Mr. D Movie Man. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tyra. Thank you. Thank you to everyone in the chat, everyone at home. Happy holiday. Nothing but love. Happy to be here. Excited because we have more than a few thoughts to share on this one. Ooh, 
cool. Like, D, before we even jump into anything, thank you so much for being here. You know I appreciate you, and we always have a really good time. Yes. <laughs> but uh, before we just, you know, jump on in, I want you to give the people a little bit of history that you have with the movie. Because I remember telling you, as soon as this movie dropped, D, you better make a thumbnail. They got all your little list of, you know, hey, this is why you should be watching my video. Because I know what I'm talking about. G give the people a little bit of, of what's going on, D. <laughs> so, um, well, first, shout out to everyone. This is D Movie Man, fellow cinephile, popcorn addict, and emerging film critic, coming to you with reliable recaps, reviews, and reactions. And that is the crux of what I do here on YouTube. Um, I love films. I love discussing all things related to film and the occasional TV show recap. And mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to the color purple, um, I have a fairly extensive history with it. So I've basically have had some experience with every iteration of the story. It has been adapted four times. So I have read uh, Alice Walker's novel. I have seen the Broadway adaptation uh, back in 2006. Um, didn't see the revival, but I saw the original version. And then um, I am now seeing this new uh, iteration uh, for actually prior to Christmas Day. And I got to see, a, a, a surprisingly, it was a shock, but I got to see an advanced screening of it. And um, yes, it was it was a very layered experience, shall yes. we say. And I'm so. sure you've seen the, the 85 Steven Spielberg version, because, you know... Oh, completely skip that. Yes, yes, I've also seen that version. <laughs> yes. But no, I, I, has, I have been very surprised to learn about so many people. Like, I'm not... Not only have I not seen it, but I have no desire to watch it just based off of the subject matter. Like, I don't want to see it. I was like, well, I just thought this was, you know, Black Card Carrying Member Movie, and we was all... I thought we all had to watch it. Right. <laughs> but I but I completely understand. Super chat in the house already. Thank you so much, Bree. Wanted to show some love. Now bye. No spoilers for me. That, that's all that matters. <laughs> that's all that matters, me. I was surprised. I was like, Bree's here. I thought you said. Like, th th thank you so much for showing me love, Bree. You know I appreciate that. That's love too. She said bye. <laughs> Thank you so much, Brie, for the super chat. But yeah, I um I really wanted to get you here because I know that you got into the Broadway situation. I have never checked for that. I never saw any of that. Never even really just cared to <laughs> look into it at all. But I did, you know, read. I can remember reading the book like uh, seventh grade. <laughs> mm -hmm. right. No, don't don't ask me why it was it was next to the Zane novels, but. Clearly, seventh grade was a very, very long time ago for me. So this is going to be really, really uh, a reflection situation for the both of us because I have no clue what you're going to say. And you may be like, Tyra, you're so wrong. I thought this, that, and that. But before we jump into that, one more. Lost in the real. Oh, I see what this is. So you mean to tell me D had to come over here for you to cross the street over to the Struggle Reviews. I love you anyway, Sean. <laughs> I ain't seen you, Sean. <laughs> love you too. <laughs> Although I think the whole uh, ensemble was great. Taraji was the real standout for me. I'm so sad she hasn't been getting more love. I'm absolutely sad about that too. Standout for me, completely different person. But you know, thank you for thank you for the super chat, Sean. <laughs> I can't wait. Like I just can't even contain it anymore. I'm gonna go ahead so we can dive on in and give the people what they came here to see. Remember to hit that like button. I can if we can get a hundred or more people in here, that would be absolutely awesome. In three words, D, can you describe how you felt about this movie? <laughs> Ooh. Okay. Yes. Hmm. Not quite there. Oh, oh! <laughs> I didn't even know you was gonna go. Like <laughs> he came outside swinging, and it's just you know it's just early. He fighting already. Um, I would say um, beautiful, um, almost indifferent. That that that's where I am. But you know, hey, we it, it sounds like we in the same boat. <laughs> But uh, who was your favorite character and what was your favorite scene? Ooh, uh, I would say, um, for me personally, I have to say Daniel, like out of everyone, and not to say that everyone wasn't bringing something to this, um, but there, there was just an honesty and a more just kind of raw something that she just had in her performance. She was the one I was most connected to. And I understand like Sophia in a lot of ways is a very memorable character, but um, mm -hmm. I feel like she managed, even though you saw traces of the original, 
uh, iteration of Sophia. There was something about her performance, especially with the emotions, that really like packed a punch. And mm -hmm. that was more so what I connected to as I, as I was watching this. Uh, as far as my favorite scene, um, I have to say, honestly, um, the opening with Mysterious Ways and Huckleberry mm -hmm. Pie, that 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 took me down. And not to say there weren't other good scenes, but it's just like as someone mm -hmm. who obviously saw that on the stage, the way that they recreated that for the big screen, you know, cinematically, I was, mm -hmm. it just was like, mm -hmm. okay, I think I'm I'm in this. I'm in this. If I, if I had any any worries, this kind of, at least for the moment, this is taking taking those worries away. It felt like I was re kind of having that experience all over again. Cool. I feel like you're still in my stuff because Danielle was my girl. I was oh. here for Tasty. <laughs> <laughs> I was here for Tasty. Like Danielle Brooks did an awesome job. She was the stand out for me. Like I love Danielle here, and she was my favorite. And personally, nobody else came close. Sorry. <laughs> Nobody else came close, and I felt like personally she was carrying this movie on her on her back. But we'll we'll, we'll get you know more into that. And uh, as far as my favorite scene, because you know I have I used to listen to a um, song or nothing. I have not looked at anything that had to do with the Broadway musical. So everything here, I was hearing it for the first time. I did do a lot of my homework to be here. Y'all know I'm gonna do my notes. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I saw that I think uh, 13, maybe more songs were removed from yeah. this that were actually uh, a part of the real musical. And they also incorporated some new stuff, but I don't know what's new and what's old. But my favorite scene was, um, I think is I think is She's Mine. Is it She, She's she's mine or she's yeah, she mine, mine or <laughs> one of those but yeah. when we have Celia, you know realize like oh is that olivia and she goes and it's the waterfall and they're washing the clothes and the the, the whole thing there was just absolutely beautiful so that was my favorite scene right off the bat that was the thing that uh captured me to be like oh like it made me sit up because you know it take it take a little bit to make your girl sit up but they, i was like oh, this is so nice <laughs> this looks so nice this is you know it was a beautiful transition so that was my favorite but yes we we are uh in the same boat when it comes to miss danielle brooks i just thought she was great but uh getting into everything we've seen the many many adaptations of course we have the color purple book by alice walker we have the movie from 1985 we have the broadway musical and now we have this situation mm -hmm. did we need this dean uh, so technically, I would say from a technical standpoint, no, I think mm -hmm. there was an opportunity um, to for to kind of prove that it was necessary as far as it kept recapturing the stage musical experience for people who obviously couldn't see it during its initial run. And then obviously, I don't think that's, you know, they don't have it available. I don't think it's, you know, it's not like a stream anywhere. So I can appreciate the fact that that experience, you know, that being technically repli uh, replicated on the big screen. So I think from that standpoint, I, that's why I was excited because it's like, hey, it's been years um since i've seen this and just like seeing the you know having the familiarity with um, the storytelling through the music and the choreography and all that i think there was an opportunity for this to be uh a retelling and you know just just showcasing that experience to people who weren't able to experience it that way absolutely i um i think everybody initials response was like no <laughs> Everybody was like, no. And I went into this with the cleanest slate I could possibly. I didn't go in trying to compare it at all to the 1985 situation. I really wanted to give this movie a fair chance because initially I was like, why? Right. <laughs> you know, why? There, are, uh, I, I love this uh, comment here from <laughs> freaking, uh, where are you, Mac? Talking about where's the five <laughs> iterations of this <laughs> <laughs> Autobiography. Oh my God. <laughs> you did it. Like there are um, I think collectively, because I know everybody equates this. A lot of people haven't seen this. I was so surprised. Is it about slaves? Is this another slave movie? Uh some of the behaviors, yeah, but uh, you know, at heart, no, it's not a slave movie, but right. just uh these are those Oscar Beatty like time period piece movies that we get every year. Mm -hmm. And it would just be nice to get something different. I'm just like, when we gonna get into Garrett and you know his traffic light or Carver mm -hmm. in the peanuts? Somebody, anybody, right. <laughs> anybody, anything else instead of us either going towards you know a remake situation or us doing more slave movies. So I think everybody was really, really reluctant on that front. But I did 
and, and all try to give this movie a fair chance. D, what would you like to see more of? And we're going to stick it to the time period because they love to give a good period piece to give us a little Oscar bait. Mm -hmm. But as far as like a period piece involving a, a all black cast, what would you like to see? Oh, man. Um, <laughs> not to like, honestly, um, I would like to see like Black Wall Street or mm -hmm. to see the experience of um, free Black people in Europe or like in other countries. Because the thing yeah. is, there are a lot of people who don't recognize that, you know, to, to quote Candy Birds, we worldwide. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We, we're <laughs> everywhere. And I think some of us, come, you know, grow up thinking, you know, our experience is only limited to, you know, the, our, the Black American experience when there's so much beyond that. And even my own family, um, I have some ancestry in Germany. So I've yeah. had a lot of awareness of what that looks like. And I just want to see stories, you know, even if it does take place. Yeah. Um, back, you know, back in the day, I want to see like, the anything that highlights the the changes and the strides and really the um that highlights the art like our building of community you know in these in these kind of remote places or just in you know just us building it um you know as time has gone on one thing i i that comes to mind for me also is uh what was that um darn am i, am I blanking i was thinking of the well, one example, like uh, Their Eyes Are Watching God and how mm -hmm. Evenville was like the black, like the first, it own, became its own town and grew into yeah. the, you know, we see it as this, these little huts and these little shacks and it grows and, you know, we, you know, come, we see the mayor, we see this thriving, you know, town. And mm -hmm. one thing also, that, that was the other film I was thinking of, like Eve's Bayou, mm -hmm. everyone has so many different thoughts on Eve's Bayou, but one thing I appreciate about Eve's Bayou is that it takes place in the 1950s. Yeah. And it, it has nothing to do with civil rights, nothing to do with discrimination, racism. It is simply about this thriving Black community yes. in New Orleans, in Louisiana. And that's the crux of it. So I think a yeah. big part of it is that also. Ditto. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely i always say like i would love to get into tulsa before you know the white woman and before it you know got burnt down and all the like we always right. get depictions but we get the horror of it we don't ever get to yeah. just see it thriving i think we all would love to see that and i think they need to make that happen instead of us kind of uh feeling a little stuck but leaving this <laughs> i just want y'all to know i gave i gave this a very very fair shot and went in with absolutely no expectations but here, I wanted to start off because, you know, I'm, I'm going to be nice. We're going to start off with some stuff we liked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> some stuff that I like. Mr. Blitz, the ambassador, a.k.a. the director. Mm -hmm. This was beautiful direction. When I went to look him up, I was like, all right, y'all trying to be cute. I don't, I don't see many credits. <laughs> I don't I don't see a lot of credits. You know, Black is King is that. And uh, I think it was the the burial of Kojo, something yeah. that I haven't had the opportunity to watch. I had, you know, seen the Beyonce's Black is King, but there right. wasn't anything to just go like, oh, I, oh, oh, he's going to do it. All right. So I went in like, let me let me see what is giving. This was beautiful. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> D, like. How did you feel about, you know, the art direction, the set design, the uh, costume? What, like it was, everything was just really, really on point. And just like you said, with their eyes were, were watching God, like the set just felt really lived in and fully realized. And I felt a little uh, Daughters of the Dust when they were going over that little Georgia Beach situation. I was right. like, exactly. like oh, I like this. I really, really like this. But, you know, how how did you feel about the uh, the direction from Blitz and just the likes of uh, involvement of Oprah and Steven Spielberg, Quissy Jones on the back end, everybody coming back together once again? Yeah. Uh, well, when it comes to Blitz, uh, I, it, I thought that was easily like the, the that was the biggest standout for me. And even mm -hmm. when I saw the trailer, I was like, oh, OK. Like, it's just like, you know, obviously, you know, it's we're going to see technically some things that are different. But um, but still, like just the imagery that I saw in the trailer, I was like, all right, like not not what I was expecting at all. Even when we like one of the opening shots of the trailer, I believe, is uh, Celia and Nettie running out on the beach, like you said, yeah. and it was like that itself. And then you know the shots of the waterfall and just yeah. all these all these just the imagery was just so um, was just so impactful and so beautifully done. And you know the thing is, the original color purple it has you know a distinct um, 
vision and it's it's yeah. more grounded it's more gritty it's in some ways it's more muted yeah. we have moments where we see the colors burst out yeah. but um it has taken a more you know grounded gritty approach whereas yeah. this is more so like hey let's explore um what this town looks like what this city yeah. looks like what this is glamorous like. yeah <laughs> and also, that's what i also love we got a we got a greater expansion on the town like when we see them ro rolling through the town to, to the uh, mm -hmm. movie theater and we just see like just how this this Presumably, I'm assuming it's a black town or a black city, but just seeing everyone thriving within this place and just how, I don't know how just vibrant and distinct and just memorable. It just, I could not really take my eyes. And there were so many kind of intricate details, even as I was watching that made me appreciate that. And also tying back into what we said about seeing stories that show us in our communities genuinely thriving. So that's yeah. something I also appreciate it. Yeah, everybody was a little shoddy, Alfonso, but you know, it was business owners, black <laughs> black business owners all, all up and through this little town. Right. Do you feel like uh, this will get re rewarded? Because you know, our OG color purple, it was snubbed all the way up and round through in every single way possible. Do you feel like any of our cast members or the director will walk away with any type of awards um hopefully they're i mean this is already kind of like starting to get award you know awards buzz and it was released yeah. right in the you know in the middle and right at the perfect time to yeah. you know to go through the um the um the Oscar campaign and such. Um, I hope it does get, if, if nothing else, I'm sure I'm sure it'll be more, but I would definitely love to see um, more technical awards because I think it definitely deserves it for that. And um, I would at the very least like to see something for uh, Danielle Brooks. Cause like I said, she oh, really great. brought it great. for me. And you know, not having seen her during the revival, it's like, okay, I don't know what I'm getting, but yeah, she brought everything that I might've missed, you know, seeing on stage here. All right. Let me read some of these comments. Yo, y'all, D and I, thank you so much to the 115 people that are here. Oh. Thank you so much for getting that like button. Y'all, come on through. I will be trying to read some comments, but y'all, I will not be engaging as much as usual because we have a lot of stuff to get through. So if you really, really want your stuff to be seen, child, attach 99 cent to it and, and somebody, but I'm going to read a few of them. Let's see. Uh, Built by creatives. This film looked like it was filmed on a soundstage, even Mr.'s house. Everything seems so crammed as far as spacing they needed to film on a location in a real house in a real town oh you wanted that color color purple um mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that that uh it doesn't feel you know as you know wide open spaces as the original but i did appreciate what they were able to do in that in that uh small space but yeah mr mrs house was not uh as grand as it is in the in the no. old version <laughs> No. Let's see, uh, <laughs> it was given Shaq. Right. Uh, the, the cinematography was beautiful. It absolutely was. Yes. Let's see what y'all talking about. Mm -hmm. mm. Hello, Nita. Thank you so much for being here. Hey, Shanice. I see you too, girl. I see. Uh, I remember as a kid being afraid of Danny Glover the first time I saw the movie. How could they turn? It, how could they turn it into a musical? <laughs> Truly, the end of days. So we we gonna talk about that also. <laughs> Hello, did you see that? Thank you so much hey, for being man. here. Let's see, anytime people watching, only 51 likes. Come on, people, show these guys some love. Thank you so much. Like, oh, they be stingy. <laughs> they be so, so stingy. But yes, moving more into, oh, hold on. Some, come on, Super Chat, come on outside. Thank you so much, Dane. I'm mixed about the color purple. Uh, haven't seen the new one, but Alice Walker has shown herself to be, oh, what the? Since when? Against but what? I mean, are you talking about just a depiction of the black man in the? Um, I mean, it is what it is. If you have read the books, the book has so much more context, in my opinion, than we do yeah. get in the nineteen eighty five version when it comes to the men, especially when we get into Mister and characters like Harpo. But you know, I would look into everything. I felt like the um, the depiction in the movie weighed a, way more heavier. <laughs> than we uh, initially got in the book. Even though it's super heavy in the book, when you take away all the context and we just get fist, then it gives you a whole different feeling. And, you know, people right. ain't like Danny Glover since the 80s. But let's keep going. <laughs> let's keep going. Thank you guys so much for those super chats. I really, really, really appreciate it. But getting into this here, more stuff we like, because we're going to be cute at first. I had not seen any Broadway anything. I didn't go. I didn't want to spoil anything. But the opening, <laughs> I was like, oh, y'all singing. 
Right. <laughs> the opening where it's just like a six minute run through of, you know, um, mysterious ways with Tamala take me to the king. I was like, oh, this is this is totally different. When I tell you, I was like, oh, what they doing in the tree? Where's the monkey dad at? <laughs> what, what, <laughs> what? <laughs> it's no monkey dad out here. They took that out and changed it to something else. Like, I thought that they kept certain things that were so synonymous with the with the film. I expected just to see them here. Like I expected them to be in the in the Broadway musical. There is no monkey dot out here, y'all. They 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 saying something totally different. <laughs> mm -hmm. But I did really really appreciate just all of these sets once again in the really grand opening. The moments that this um movie musical did decide to be its own distinctive things i felt like it worked so well and it was this you know loki got my hopes up <laughs> right this got my hopes up because i was like oh if we're coming out the gate like this i i can expect to look forward to so much so much more of it not being the 1985 version and i'll right. tell you how i felt you know moving on later uh -huh. but then, how, how did you feel about those settings and that that grand opening that we get i just felt like it set the tone for baby they say 1985. <laughs> yes uh i like i said that was easily one of my favorite scenes and there were others that i enjoyed but it was like I said, it was a perfect way to really, and, I, and of course it's different because of course, like I'm, it was also like an additional appreciation because like I said, I've seen this on the stage and this just yeah. took that and elevated. Even the tone, and I, one thing I noticed is that even with some of the songs in this version, like the instrumentation is different and sometimes mm -hmm. they lean into more swing, more bluesy, even with this song, you know, it's it's very similar, but they get more into the dun 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 dun. Yeah. Like, you know, the original song is more, like it's still there, but it kind of it takes time to ramp up. It's kind of like dun, 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 <laughs> like it's more like oh, that. Yeah, whereas yeah, this, I'm like, have you got to put my finger up and <laughs> I was about to go go to the old church in the back real quick. <laughs> exactly, and as soon as it, um, to the Lord, and then it was just like dun, dun, and we just started. Um, so I thought that was such a great way to just kind of set the scene and just bring us into this immediately and not even just kind of really build up. It was kind of like, okay, we had like a little build up with the, you know, and the hands and uh, them standing mm -hmm. under the trees, which I thought was beautiful. But yes. yeah, the way we just get pulled into it immediately, I, I appreciated it. Once again, you guys coming through with the super chats. <laughs> Built by creative said, uh uh, thank you so much for pulling up with the 2020 twin. Y'all know I appreciate it. Let's see, how can they tell us not to compare the film to the 1985 version? 85% of the film was a remake, they just used some of the music from the mu from the musical. <laughs> Built by creative said, I can't wait. <laughs> Oh, Lord. <laughs> Example, uh, in the play, Sophia doesn't even go uh, to jail and there's no Miss Millie. Oh, really? Oh, we, we, gonna, we gonna talk, Bill. For, oh, oh, really? <laughs> I did. I did not know that. But thank you. Thank you so much for that super chat. I really, really appreciate it. We gonna get into all of that. But I didn't know that. Um, <clears throat> oh, ooh, just hold on. Because <laughs> We're going to get into that. Like, those are the things that I was anticipating. I thought that this was going to be so, so different. And since Built by Creative is gone and put it out outside in the world, this is not what I expected. <laughs> this is not what I expected. I thought this was going to be so different and stray so far from that 1985 version. And I was like, oh, this is familiar. This is familiar. And then by the time we got to a certain space in the movie, it just felt like we were hitting beats and adding songs i was like is this i i didn't know how to um take it away but if you want to get into this 85 percent that built by creatives left us here how much of this uh movie is play broadway situation and how much is just you know whoopi goldberg in them in your opinion Hmm. <laughs> Run that back one more time, just so I'm just so I can yeah, gather. In your opinion, you know, from seeing that play and mm -hmm. seeing uh the 1985 one with Whoopi Goldberg, mm -hmm. this movie here, how much of this is really that distinctive Broadway musical, and how much of this is the 1985 version? Of the uh, movie? A lot more of it is the 1985 version, which was a huge issue for me personally. Now mm -hmm. the thing is, I understand it would be 
technically difficult, um, depending on mm -hmm. how you choose to interpret, because that's what it comes down to direction. How do you choose an adaptation? How do you choose to adapt something? How do you choose to envision that? How do we, you know, there are so many ways to do that. I'll even say when it comes to musicals, I would say Chicago. You know, we all grow up watching Sesame Street, Barney, yes. uh, Mary Poppins, Disney, <laughs> all that kind of stuff. But um, Chicago was the film that really made me appreciate movie musicals because I understood yeah. that they were getting into the head of this character, having dreams of vaudeville and just kind of drawing this parallel between this corrupt city and this law system, justice system, all that. And then this glitter and glamor and these dreams of the stage. And then like once I get clicked, I was like, oh, I get it. And then it made me appreciate musicals in a deeper way yeah. um, and in, in a more adult way, I should say. And so um, I, I understand that um, and I can appreciate that. I just think that um, the choice to just replicate so much of what was already present in the 1985 film, literally mm -hmm. some of the same choices, because even the 1985, the, the Broadway musical, the stage musical is technically more faithful to the original novel than the 1985 film is. There's a lot there that's already, you know, that is accurate, but there are some ch specific changes that, that are made. Ooh, and, don't um, you. you just trying to Who are you trying to disappoint me? <laughs> I had not seen it and I didn't want to do any homework until we talked. I right. felt that. I felt that while watching it. Mm -hmm. I was like, there is so much uh, in the in the best way possible. This made me want to go watch the actual musical. I wanted to go like, where, where is it showing? And when, when they going when they going to show it again? Like, I wanted to <laughs> see it for myself because I was like, there is something missing here. I don't know what made them go the route of trying to mix it. Maybe they didn't think that they would reach the core, you know, the color purple lovers if they didn't try to tack on so many familiar things. But I was here for the different. Like, I thought with them, like, they were very, oh, this isn't a remake. This is, you know, something totally different. So I just knew that I was going to be diving into all of those things from the novel that we didn't even touch on in 1985 with this movie. And the fact that we didn't, it was really, really disappointing. But we didn't got all. We didn't got all. We supposed to be talking about the stuff we liked. <laughs> Yo, <it's... laughs> the, the chat is throwing us off. <laughs> we supposed to be talking about the stuff we like. Let's let's get into Fatima Robinson, nineteen hundreds, but make it hoochie coochie. I was here for the choreography. <laughs> <laughs> I I love me so Fatima. Fatima has been dancing like since I can remember like choreographing and doing everything for, for everybody like for so long so the fact that she is still in these streets and breaking stuff down the way that she did here the choreography felt very uh period appropriate but it also felt modern it was it was giving Torx City a couple of times and I was here for you know throwing that ass in a circle okay. what about you D <laughs> what about you D <laughs> oh man um yes um i did appreciate the choreography i will say again um having seen the stage musical um some of the uh some of the adjustments were a little off-putting at first um yes. and the style of dancing in some ways was a little bit uh like in a in a good way and in a in in a just a just a different way i won't say anything that was bad but um mm -hmm. some of it was very sped up and um, mm -hmm. I didn't really have as much time to kind of like, you know, you don't, I, for me, I didn't get as much time to kind of like sit in some of the, everything was kind of like, hey, yeah. you know, and like really speeding it up, which is not a bad Oh, movie. like the whole movie, because yeah, we, we already spoiled it anyway. Like a lot of the movie was, hey, and next scene. And it was, I was like, why are we going so fast? Fast, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So I love the choreography. Like even like the the how the choreography flowed with some of the visual choices. Like when Shug, uh, you know, hits the light at the juke joint, mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you see everybody. Yeah, getting all the silhouette. I was like, okay, I like this. <laughs> yes. And so yeah. So I think it's it's impressive. I think it's you know obviously well thought out. I will say there were times though I wanted to kind of like sit in some of the choreography or just kind of lean into some of it without it being so like. You know, yeah, like wait, 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 chaotic. So, yeah. It was a lot of. It was a wonderful spectacle, but I wanted to see and bask in the spectacle also. But with this, with them being, uh, you know, so consumed, we just. It, it was a lot of these things were rushed, and I'm gonna get into <laughs> what was really rushed for me, and I would have preferred to sit there. Right. But y'all better sing. The the singing yes. here was great. Like I think a lot of us, myself, I will forget in a heartbeat that Taraji P Henson can sing a note. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know how old I was, and I was like, oh, when she was in, I could do better by myself. That was hard. I thought she was lip singing this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I thought she was lip singing. Like it was, uh, you know, her being able to carry a tune and. 
uh, vocal wise, hold her hold her own here with the likes of Danielle Brooks and uh, Fantasia, who were in the Broadway musical, of course, and kind of had time to play with and live in these characters for however long the show got to got to run. So to see Taraji here, we already knew Fantasia. I just was waiting for her to kick her shoes off, but this ain't that kind of movie. <laughs> <laughs> I was really here for. Seeing Grant Fantasia like in this grand way, like weirdly, I'm not. Um, I was never like into American Idol or anything like that, or right. just I love Fantasia, but she's kind of been she's had a great career, but kind of like in a sense of like maybe an underdog or just maybe hitting the the bare minimum of where she could possibly hit. So to see right. her in such a grand way and have all of these eyes on her in this type of space. That was really, really great. And I thought everybody vocally did a good job. I put my little songs here that I uh, sing that I love the most. I don't know what's uh, new here or a song from the Broadway situation, but I put Hell No because I said Hell No. <laughs> hell No. <laughs> I love the rendition of Hell No. She Be Mine, Push the Button, Miss Silly Pants in Mysterious Ways. What about you, D? How did you, how did you feel about the singing? <laughs> yeah, those were definitely um, some highlights. She Be Mine was actually deleted from the original Broadway musical. It was going to be featured, uh-huh. but then they got rid of it. But then they, um, you know, they do workshopping and they decide what stays, what goes. And so yeah. um, they decided to um, get rid of it. And so for this, they brought it back. And um, definitely, because once she started, I was like, they, I was thinking like, oh, this is going to be this song. And it wasn't. And I thought it was this song. I was like, what is this? And then that's when I realized it was, oh, this is a new song. Um, mm-hmm. But yes, um, I I would say my second favorite after Mysterious Ways was Miss Seeley's Fans. That was already a song mm-hmm. I enjoyed from the musical, but just the way they got into the tap dancing and like I said, the whole swing vibe of it. And mm-hmm. just that being Seeley's moment where she recognizes like, hey, like I'm really like in my bag. This is my moment. I'm Look who's wearing the pants now. <laughs> like she is like, here we end. Yeah, I just, it was such a great moment. And most of the songs, uh, the other songs that you mentioned, I enjoyed. Actually, believe it or not, um, it, that was another one that threw me because I didn't know there was going to be new songs in this. But mm-hmm. um, I enjoyed, um, I don't think it was Keep It Moving. There was a different title for it. But I actually enjoyed Young Nettie's song that Halle Bailey did mm-hmm. with uh, Felicia uh, Pearl and Posse. Yeah, I, think it, I think it is Keep It Moving because if y'all ain't ran down, you know, the soundtrack situation on your Apple Music, go do that. I It made me appreciate the songs even more. Just listen to them in my own time. Yeah. Let me read a couple of y'all comments. Let's see. Uh, Fantasia just needed better songwriters and producers in her career. Uh, Built uh, by creatives really hated the fact that they got rid of Get Ready for the Big Dog. I don't know what that is, but I'm sure D does. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, actually, in the trailer, when they showed when they, they showed um, Seeley walking past the men, you know, the prison gang, chain gang um, in the field, I thought that was Big Dog, actually, um, mm-hmm. because that's the song where um, Seeley first makes it to Mr.'s house. And you see all the men in the field basically working. You know, if you think hard work and dogging you before, huh, get ready for the big dog. You know, and yeah. so basically it's her realizing that this is her life now. And all the men are kind of reinforcing what her life is going to be. Work, 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 work. So yeah. they said ain't no men's is here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, keep it moving and working was new yeah. songs written for the film. Yes, mm-hmm. keep it moving. D like keep it moving. Waiting for Frantasia to break into <laughs> three in the morning <laughs> in the pancake house. Well, you know what? Stop, Mac. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> uh, Fantasia was hot and cold in her career. Maybe, maybe not so much moving forward. Our girl was outside. Baby Taja is going to sing down. I'm so glad she finally getting her flowers. Yes, absolutely. And let's see, Taraji, Taraji, <laughs> Taraji's Howard degree was in music theater. I I did not know that that that's good it, it shows here it shows here i wish she you know got more moments like this but yes taraji did her thing everybody everyone vocally was really really great here but moving moving forward y'all yes this, <laughs> this year i just want to get through like the stuff loud for, for good or bad <clears throat> This is a, a, I put double stack cast. Everybody, they mama is in this film. <laughs> I, <laughs> I did not, I don't go read any synopsis, go look at no cast. I just watched the movie. I was like, oh, every, every, everybody's here. <laughs> mm-hmm. Everybody's here. And I put for good or bad, because we're about to like maybe get more into those bad things that I didn't like so much, you know, after, after D maybe tells us some more of the stuff he loved. Um, 
a stat cast can be good when we have time to flesh all of these people out and utilize them to their full capacity. If we stack it too much and we uh, are short on time and something like a musical where we have to get those musical numbers in, sometimes it can be a double-edged sword and the movie can suffer for it. But everybody and their mama is here in this movie. How did you feel about the casting? <laughs> Um, I felt two ways about the cast. I feel like there was a lot of talented people here, a lot of people I enjoy and appreciate in one way or another. Um, I think, <laughs> personally, um, I think some of the casting felt like stunt casting and that it was, <laughs> some of the casting was for the sake of the name versus what really served the role and the emotions of certain scenes. Mm -hmm. Um, and like, I'll, and it kind of depends, you know, we can kind of go back and forth about who, but I will say, and I had, I had to cut this out in my original review. I didn't want it to be too long. But I love David Allen Greer uh, since, you know, In Living Color, Boomerang, <laughs> early 90s days, right? Um, but it kind of threw me um, when I saw him <laughs> as the Reverend because it was I, giving me Leon Lonnie love. You know what I'm saying? Be all right. Whoa, whoa, I got a feeling go <laughs> moonwalk down the alley. D beat me to my slide, y'all. <laughs> David Allen Greer was, and it's, and I'm not even going to put David Allen Greer in a box, even though we know him for more of his comedic talents. But if they would have, because I've seen him be dramatic also when need be, so he has that range, and he also comes from a Broadway background as well. He'd be on them stages too. If he has something to work with, it it's there. Like they gave David Allen Greer nothing here. <laughs> They gave him nothing here. So as soon as you see him in the way that they have him performing vocally, it's very re reminiscent of Martin and, you know, kill my mama bird situation. And you don't want to be thinking about, you know, those comedic situations when you are watching this. And for somebody who is supposed to be Suge Avery's father, like what I love the most about uh, that dynamic between Suge and her father in the 1985 version, that man barely has to say anything. <laughs> it's all just emoting in his face and his emotion like you just see the disdain and the desperation coming off of Shook and you just you're longing for what she's longing for and their relationship matters so much that that excuse my that shit was non-existent here right. <laughs> it was locked up on me here and I was disappointed for it thank you so much to the 140 people in this chat keep hitting that like button and showing us some love like that was just so terrible but I didn't mean to go there <laughs> I didn't I, I didn't mean to go there, but I was really this made this movie made me long to see the actual Broadway musical and made me want to go watch the 1985 version, honestly. But like, let me keep going. <laughs> keep going. <laughs> Anything else on, on, on this cast, D? Yes. Um, I was going to mention then on the flip side, I had people who really surprised me, people I didn't know that were gonna be in this. And mm -hmm. I have to give Dion Cole his kudos because oh, I didn't know he was Thank gonna be in this. You trying and to be cute on my slides? Hold <laughs> up! <laughs> you hold all the way up, D. Oh Lord, I think it's after this, and we are gonna get into these characters. But like this here, because you know I had to give it to my boy Dion. I was like, Dion, is that you? But let, let, let's get into this red lipstick. I did like this. <laughs> this is something new. This incorporation of a different color. We do. Uh, with me, when I think about the color purple, I think about, you know, me and you, Maki Dada situation, them, you know, giving their little sisterhood situation in the field with those beautiful purple purple flowers and that scene with Suge. And, you know, when you walk by, don't acknowledge the color purple, make God, you know, all these good things. That's what I think about instantly. So for this new staple color of red, we have characters, you know, not just, you know, uh, Celie, but Sophia and Suge wearing red and it's not just so much you know a shook thing it's it's a, it's a, a significance of you know change or something bold or th just the lipstick i just love the way that they use the color red anything else on this day <laughs> no, all i'm gonna say um is that one thing i learned or kind of read uh revis you know as far as me just reading the color purple and you know i like doing little looking at essays and deep dives and things and yeah. I saw something that said that basically um, we look at the color purple and the fact that Suge is the one to reference that in the story and in you know the original film. Yeah. Um, it's the fact that you know when we see her in red, red embodies passion and fire and boldness mm -hmm. and you know 
all of that. But then she's also someone who sings about the blues and her life reflects the blues. So she and herself, her life and her experiences, she is the color purple in the mixture yeah. of red and blue. And I was like, that's wow. good. I, and I, and you, you see that represented here well. I love that in the beginning. I think we only see Suge and um, Sophia in the colors of red. And then when, you know, Celie is in them fancy pants, she finally has on red and all that good stuff. It's not just, you know, on the lipstick. It was everywhere. I was here for that. But sure. back to Dion Cole. <laughs> back to Dion Cole. Dion, is that you? Like... Paul, not Paul. Do not play with Dion. Dion is here first getting into uh, the cast members that I love and the performances that I love the most before we get into, you know, the not so much situations for me. I don't know about D, but Dion did amazing as Alfonso here. When you have to look up to see, like, is this that person? If y'all slept on Dion before, don't ever do that. I put the average Joe here because if you want to see more of a dramatic performance for him, I also have a review up for this show. It's on BET Plus. Thank okay. you. Thank you to the person who paid for it because y'all know I wouldn't check it for none on BET. <laughs> <laughs> but it made me look at him in a totally, you know, different light. And I remember doing my review for that. And I was like, why y'all been hiding Dion? He, you know, can be dramatic. He really has some different acting chops that he has not been able to explore and I didn't know he was going to be in this movie so when I see it I was like oh my god <laughs> it's Dion but how, how how did you feel about his performance and once again this is somebody doing a lot with a little bit of screen time just so you know exactly <laughs> yeah um he he shocked me because you know watching I'm thinking this is a new actor and it mm -hmm. honestly wasn't until um Mr. comes asking basically for Nettie's hand, you know, Seely then becomes his his, his um unexpected mm -hmm. wife and such and such. I was like, I was like <laughs> Yeah. I I looked and I leaned in, I was like, is it? <laughs> like I really was like, is that <laughs> um literally did not did not see it. I mean, it's his face, and of course I'm used to him with more facial hair, but it's just like the demeanor, like all of it. I'm like. And I felt the intimidation. And honestly, and this is not a knock on Coleman Domingo because I appreciated aspects of his performance, but I'm mm -hmm. like, I think Dion Cole could have could have gone for Mister. Honestly, he could have. How <laughs> 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 do we, 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 we want him to do it? We want him to do it. I got I got a suit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there is a super chat up here. Thank you so much, TG, for that 99 cent super chat. I appreciate you guys so much for showing love. Y'all know the struggle is real on his on this channel. It's just not a name only. It's the whole channel as a whole. So any love that you guys show, it it it, it, it touches my whole spirit. And y'all trying to show <laughs> y'all trying to be cute. Thank you so much, Build by Creatives. Let's see. Uh love, love Dion. They did. Did him wrong, <laughs> putting him in that casket with that four X photo on top. <laughs> See now you gonna make me run it back and go look at it. Exactly. <laughs> Thank you so much for that four ninety nine super chat. I, I absolutely love it. <laughs> was Dion in blackface? He was not. I think it seemed like they uh for a portion of the movie, they were kind of showing him in shadows. So you yeah. weren't really sure. So when you actually saw him, it was like, oh, shout out to Dion Cole. And he is doing a superb job. But I could I could definitely see me getting into him as Mr. Mm -hmm. I could definitely. But getting into uh, more people that I loved here, because I don't want to just keep it at D Daniel Brooks, because mm -hmm. child, that, that, that's where it was for me. She's here again. I said, <laughs> hell no. But <laughs> uh, Felicia Pearl, the I wanted to spend so much more time with her. Yes. I love her. I don't know if she is she from the musical. Oh no, she actually she actually I saw where she had talked about how she had auditioned uh, for the musical uh, for the original musical audition mm -hmm. for the revival audition for this for um, adult Seely and you know none of that worked out and then she ended up getting oh, cast as young Seely. Wow, like I could definitely no no splice to Fantasia. I could see her as adult Seeley. Mm -hmm. I could with what Seely is supposed to represent. Cause um uh, I love and I love Fantasia, but Fantasia is a whole woman. <laughs> it, I was having a hard time. I was being distracted by all that all of the, the ass and the dress. I was like, all right, it's only so many aprons y'all can put over Fantasia's ass. <laughs> you can't hide that under no 1900s moo moos child. It's gone. All all the titties and the body yaddy is gonna always body on Fantasia. But Ooh. I'm I'm gonna be cute for y'all and just try not to look at it. <laughs> but <laughs> 
all of that was there. So just getting into the age that Celu was supposed to be and uh fantasia looked like she was living in her womanhood and like missed i wish you would i, I slap you with these titties then back that ass up on you that's just, that's just where i was i'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> but you know y'all laughing down here because y'all know i'm telling the truth <laughs> I, am like, Lord. I was so distracted d i was like child what y'all really trying to um be cute and um keep uh <laughs> keep us from noticing all of this stuff on Fantasia but I could definitely see her in um in the role because I enjoyed her so much for the the little time that we got her and I thought she did so well like just her acting and emoting with her entire body and I was, I was like I don't know her but I really really like her and I was like oh I forgot that we're not you know going through this entire journey with her we're going to have her age and you know get Fantasia but I did like her these two were actually my favorites what what, what about you D? <laughs> yeah I would say they were um definitely standouts I'll actually give um which which I wouldn't have probably said that I actually thought um Halle Bailey, surprisingly, um, did a good job as Nettie. Um, definitely a better job than The Little Mermaid, which is not necessarily a knock on her because I thought The Little Mermaid had a lot of issues. I know they were trying, but I had, to, had some issues with that. But I felt um, like even just based, I'm basing this off of the scene where uh, Mr. is following her and she has that kind of that tete-a-tete -tete back and forth. And I was like, okay, I like, I like this and as opposed to the more soft spoken that we got in the last one. I'm like, I kind of like that that interaction. Um, the <laughs> Ooh, I'm alive. I'm creators. Thank you so much for the dollar ninety nine super chat. Because maybe she could sweep out the caboose. Um, the caboose was in Fantasia's dress. <laughs> it was though. It really. Was. <laughs> it absolutely was. <laughs> Oh, oh Lord. let's see. Aaron Jones said, "How do you, how do you feel about the Whoopi cameo?" Personally, I was like, "Y'all could have kept that." <laughs> it wasn't a uh, significant enough for me to go like, "Oh, this was a really great way to use Whoopi with the importance that she has to the film." I just it didn't it didn't really do a whole lot for me. What what about you, D? <laughs> I mean, I wasn't. I didn't. I didn't hate it. I, I wasn't expecting it. So, I mean, I wasn't, you know, so I wasn't, I was like, oh, okay. But I will say like, it wasn't, like you said, it wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't significant. And I yeah. think personally they could have done the same way. Cause one thing I did like about this is that um, I liked how they kind of paid tribute to, they kind of paid tribute to the legacy of the musical by having Fantasia, you know, who was on the original Broadway run after LaShawn's and then obviously mm -hmm. uh, Daniel Brooks, who was in the revival. Um, and I think they could have done and, you know, and then having these new actors and actresses also. But I think they could have also like had more, you know, featured, you know, people from either the 1985 film or from the original yeah. uh, musical cast. I think that's something we could have actually gotten. Yeah, when I saw Whoopi, I was like, "Ooh, who else here?" And I was like, "Oh, it was just Whoopi." Yeah. <laughs> it was just, it was just Whoopi. But we should have known when they only use her to that capacity. Thank you so much, TG, for that ninety-nine cent super chat. You, you know how I feel about you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Definitely needed that thing. Was thanging. <laughs> Literally could have kept that. Definitely could have kept the, you know, the cameo situation. But just. I, I just felt like I we traveled so much with Sophia and I just felt like I really got to live in Danielle's character and just grow with her and really even adapt to some of the changes that they made with Sophia. I thought she did a really great job transitioning through the scenes into the songs and I, I Danielle was just my favorite. She was just my favorite and I wish we could have spent a, a little bit more time with you know Felicia, but it's so it's okay. But we were never um <laughs> when I seen this. I was like, what? P PG, the color purple, PG-13. I was like, oh, I don't need to know nothing else. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't need to know anything else. And I understand. We know they all about the dollar and trying to reach every little demographic. Oh, Y'all can bring everybody to see this movie. This movie was at a disadvantage automatically <laughs> because it was PG-13. freaking Why? When they said that, I was like, oh, this is not going to be a book deep dive, <laughs> which is what, what I thought. I thought it was going to be the, the musical deep dive version of the book. This was not at all that. Like, I was really disappointed to see them go the PG-13 route. 
I do commend them for what they were able to show and do with the rating, but trash decision. <laughs> what about you, D? <laughs> yeah, because see, the thing, I even mentioned that too. I was like, the thing is, because I, I had an issue with how a certain element of the story was handled, but I'll say that in the meantime. But yeah, the book is very much in your face as far as the language and scenes that mm -hmm. are depicted. I, I had forgotten um, some of the things that, that, I mean, literally like the first page, first couple of pages, um, mm -hmm. you know, Seeley references, you know, what Alfonso does, you know, in that, you know, first unfortunate encounter, but she, there's references to, you know, to P-U-S-O-Y and, 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 you know, and, and other words. Um, and it's very frank and it's very like, it's not sanitized. And um, especially when it comes to Suge and Seeley, um, that definitely is not, that whole <laughs> dynamic is definitely not PG-13. Um, I had already said that I recalled like a specific reference to Soap Suds and mm -hmm. also the whole, you know, push the button piece, which was a really mm -hmm. interesting way of reinterpreting it for the Broadway musical because it's really everything she told um, Seely about the button and what yeah, it looks you like. You talking about the button? I was waiting for them to put that mirror down there. Right? <laughs> really was. We, I knew we weren't going to do that. I think... Um, Everybody was anticipating the like consummation or the 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 stamp like oh they was getting down it's nothing you know ambiguous about it even though we know that there is a genuine love there like in the book it's no mistaking that uh Suge was going both ways child <laughs> like very no, right. respectfully like very much you know a, a woman of that time exploring every ounce of her sexuality with whomever whenever she wanted to mm -hmm. that is not going to be here for PG thirteen. The relationship that Suge has with Celie is so important to the relationship that she has with Mr., especially later on. I wanted to see some of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that. That's what I wanted to see. And this really felt like a freaking missed opportunity because we wanted to be PG-13 and keep it cute and get all the coins. It made me upset. It made me upset. <laughs> thank you, Polly from the Latino Slant. Thank you, thank you, thank you. A whole woman, you say. <laughs> yes, a whole woman. Thank you so much for the dollar ninety nine. <laughs> Polly, thank you, thank you. Y'all go check out Polly over there on the Latino Slant. Yeah. This was such like uh, I'm gonna get it. If y'all didn't know, this is the stuff I didn't like. Um <laughs> I'm going to get into uh, more with the slides, what I really wanted to explore with certain characters and what I felt like them giving it a PG-13 situation. It really did a disservice to the movie overall. Like, oh, that was, it was so trashy. Go ahead, D. Yeah, no, I was just going to say, um, and I'm tying this into um, rap-ish, that's what I'm calling it, but um, or the stream. <laughs> but, you know, I've been following the, the series and after... <laughs> And I have to say, I knew we weren't gonna get anything like this, but I'm not gonna lie, because I, you know, we we have our conversations about your appreciation of um, the down and dirty <laughs> and, and, and TV and movies. So um, when it came for Chastity's big moment, I was like, wow, um, mm -hmm. Chastity has made her way to Sorrow's Kitchen and licked the pot clean. Shout out to <laughs> Big Mama's house. <laughs> and I was like, man. Now, obviously, we weren't going to go there, but I was yeah. kind of like, it, like, the thought of it, I was like, because that thing was intense. I must say, yeah. I, wasn't, yeah. I wasn't mad at it. They um, weren't. <laughs> so, but the thing is, even if you are trying to keep it PG-13, you can still, yeah. like, allude to it without being X-rated or graphic. And just the fact yeah. that they... And to me, even the way that it was filmed, like in mm -hmm. silhouette and shadow and pulling away, I'm like, that is literally the opposite. Like, and to me in 2023, <laughs> 1985, we kind of understand. And even to me, as limited as the depiction was in 1985, to me, there was more intimacy and more oh, yeah. something there, even with that limited, yeah. you know, you know, uh, depiction. Than yeah. it was here. I'm like, how is it 2023 and we can't get <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just subtle things like they them framing the the camera around Suge's hands, touching Celie's hands, and just her gazing into her eyes and just talking to her directly. And there was just so much passion there, and it, it didn't really, you know, just have to be spoken. They thought they were, you know, going above and beyond. Like I'm like, yeah, but this is um. This is cute. <laughs> this is, you know, these are beautiful. And, and I'm going to get into it with Suge slides, but we more so focus on the infatuation of Suge. Like everybody loves Suge. Suge is just so beautiful and all oh, this woman. But when we get into the sexual part and the relationship part, we still leave that on the ground. Like, 
Why? And I see y'all coming for me talking about I'm on some after dark situation. <laughs> In this chat, y'all know I'm here for an after dark situation. But I knew we weren't going to get that. But e- even in the way that I appreciate it because I was like, I don't know how they're going to go with all the abuse that takes place here, especially on uh, Mistress part. How are we going to incorporate that even um the, the grape scene, you know, when she first arrives to the house, the way that the camera transitions, you know, from the bed to the picture and we kind of insinuated without having to, I was like, oh, okay, I can, I can get with this. I wonder what they're going to do with Suge and Seely. Oh, we just going to dance on the record and have her, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, which was graphic. Like there were, there were times in this movie where I was like, okay, this is great, but this is giving me style over substance. This is awesome shooting. This is wonderful to look at. I love her and the, the suds and the tub and the, the record spinning and Seely just being completely enamored of all things Suge, but we wanted some intimacy too. And I didn't feel like we got a whole lot of that. It just felt like, oh, you just, you know, this is my friend. We sleep in the bed together sometimes, but you know, I'm strictly dickly. That's, that's what it felt like. Yeah. <laughs> that That's what it felt like in so many words. But <laughs> I got another super chat here. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Built by creators for that $4.99 super chat. Um, what driving school did Miss Millie go to before picking up Sophia? <laughs> 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 that man attacked me like I would have oh if if Miss Millie was not in the the Broadway situation then what what is there what is um is what is Sophia's obstacle there if it's not her being arrested for you know I said hell no well it's that's still there it's just not this big um it's kind of like because even in the book um you know Celia is writing and she's referencing you know after you know to, writing and referencing what has happened kind of after the fact and recounting the story. So it's kind of the same thing. From what I remember, I feel like they show like Sophia sitting in a chair in silhouette and it still happens, but um, but it's not it's not like a big scene. It's like more so what it's being referenced and what the circumstances are going to be as far as Sophia and, you know, the conversation between her and Nettie about the things that have taken place. Mm. Dane, I'm so sorry for skipping your super chat. Thank you so much, Dane. Now I'm mad Tyra didn't include booty pics. No, I did not include any pictures of Fantasia's booty. Like <laughs> y'all know I'll do it, but we we professionals today. This is the color purple. <laughs> this is not um, you know, rap stuff. I ain't capturing them images like that. I had to get these. You know, it ain't a lot of things out for this show, okay? But um, yeah, that that I, I really missed that. But getting because <laughs> child, we will, we will, it, it's so much to discuss here. But we want to keep y'all here forever. But moving on to this here. Ah, uh, lacking in wasted potential. <laughs> you ain't gonna be using me to sing on hooks. What I look like, Patty LaBelle or something. <laughs> That's the first thing that came to my mind when I when I saw Anjanu Ellis. Now, mm-hmm. I love me some Anjanu. Baby, I set up. I was like, oh, she's here. If they have Angelou Ellis here, that means we are going to tap more into that book and not just straight up, you know, start the film with Celie's mother already passing away and get these scenes and moments with the mother. How dare. <laughs> How dare y'all waste it? Why, why, why would y'all bring her for this little cameo situation? I was so excited to see her, D. They got my hopes up thinking that we were going to dive into other situations in the book with the mother. Right. And just uh, how she would even end up with the likes of Alfonso and, you know, the history of what happened there and just the mental state she may have been in for, you know, been in for certain places, certain things to take place within the home, you know. But no, we just got, you know, you ain't just going to be using me to sing on the hook. What you think I am? Patty LaBelle or something? Like, y'all just really brought me here for this cameo. <laughs> right. so, did all for what I said about, you know, what we discussed about David Allen Greer. Lou Gossett did not do anything for me here. And I needed him to do something for me here because Mister's father is probably like one of my favorite characters. From the- Listen, how <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, and you know, respect to you know Mister. Lugasa, he has had a really, really you know great career, but oh. he is a, he is a man of a certain age. I think he's he's almost ninety, if I'm not mistaken. And he is, you know, to be respected. But just that hus- huspa and it's, it's crazy, you know, Alfonso, another Alfonso. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Alfonso Caesar gives us in 1985. A lot of the quotes that I will quote down are, are from him. So when I saw the father, I was like, 
what is it giving? And then it was just like, oh, he's just there in name only to say that old Lou Gossett was here in the role. And I was just really expecting to get some. And my name ain't Squeak. My name Mary. Mary what, girl? If you don't sit there, like, I was waiting. <laughs> I was waiting to get into, you know, some of those moments. You know, you're sitting at the head of your own dinner table and you're acting like waiter. I was, I wanted some of that. But we, we didn't get any of that from Lou Gossett. And he was just here in name only. And I really felt like it was wasted potential. But how do you feel about these these three people, D? <laughs> yeah, it's just like there are two. I just feel like there are so many emotional layers within the book. Um, and there are so many things that can be explored that we obviously did not see in the 1985 uh, mm -hmm. film. And especially because, uh, yeah, because Mr. Caesar from the, from the first film, <laughs> I mean, you, guys, you will never... <laughs> Miss Silly, you have my sympathy. Like, you like, you just... <laughs> Not many women allow their husbands hold to live up in their house. Like, come on outside. I'll be here for it, D. Yeah, I paused because I was, I was hoping you were going to jump in and you did. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But, yeah, that's like that. He is an iconic part of that film. He's not even in it that much. Um, mm -hmm. But it's it, he's so memorable. And then um, with the with uh, with Mama, that was such a wasted opportunity because her backstory is incredibly tragic. Like what, what ends up happening between her and uh, Nettie and Celie's father, all that. And mm -hmm. I'm not saying we were going to get a whole explore, but like it's yeah. easy to kind of touch on that or or get some i you know some idea yeah. of how their lives. Yeah. Were think straight. um think Holly Berry and Queen. What happened to her and her right. little mental state was gone. Right. Put, put that on uh <laughs> on their mother, and you'll get. That's what we're missing out on, you know, her yeah. being fraud and being uh pretty much used and taken advantage of at, at her most vulnerable moment, like with a man like Alfonso. And he was right. able to, you know, move and infiltrate her life and do what he did to, you know, her daughter. So I thought we were going to get that. And that was very freaking disappointing. Yep. <laughs> <sighs> Anything else for, for any any of these people here, D? <laughs> Uh, no, that's that's pretty much it. Okay, rolling over into more wasted potential, and y'all might, you know, love them because even before we leave Lou Gossett, I thought with his character being a little bit more demure in the way it's presented, even though we know he's, you know, an a hole. I mm -hmm. thought, I was like, oh, are they going to like maybe incorporate Mr. Sister from the book and her maybe right. being the only one to show, you know, are we going to use this moment to explore some of the other characters from the book that, you know, have some significance, but we've never seen them. Nope. It was just, you know, Lou Gossett, as Martin would say. But let me keep going. <laughs> I thought we was going to get some Kate. I think her <laughs> name is Kate. Uh, but this here is also wasted potential for me. And I saw in the chat, a lot of you really, really loved um, Corey. I am so heated with how they keep doing Squeak. Squeak is so significant in the book. I was so hyped. I was like, Okay, maybe this isn't in name only. I was like, okay, this is her. But maybe since it's her, they're going to give her something to do. She is, you know, a celebrity. Maybe you're going to really, you know, get to see her act and not, you know, this here, I do join. And then we don't never hear squeak, squeak again. I thought we were going to explore, you know, squeak trying to go in, you know, that bond she had with Sophia later on. Helping, you know, with the kids. Trying to, you know, go get Sophia out and... Because Sweet was, you know, uh, I think she was biracial in the book and she kind of had more of, you know, a, um, a, a white woman. Maybe she could um, pass as far as appearance and she goes to try to get Sophia out and she yeah. ends up being, you know, assaulted and all those other good things. I yeah. thought we was going to actually hear Squeak do more than Squeak. Right. <laughs> no, no, it was the same 1985. Why? <laughs> I was so disappointed, D, even if we didn't, you know, just go through all of everything. Mm -hmm. I just really was hoping that we would see, because Squeak is very important. Yes. I always, you know, go back to that 1985 version when Squeak goes, you know, my name ain't Mary, my name is Mary Agnes, and, you know, I'm going with Suge. And, and if you don't know anything about the book, you'd be like, why the hell is she going with Suge? Right. <laughs> why is she, why is this even a thing? But when you get into the book, you see how important she is to the dynamic dynamic in the, of the women. And she's overcoming her very own obstacles and finding her voice as well. Even when we have this little moment here with this frame and she's like, you know, uh, I thought I wanted to sing. And Suge's like, girl, get over there. I I'll be here. What time do you need me to be here to sing? I was like, is she going to have, you know, a song? Is she? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. And getting into Corey Harwick for me, um, I thought we would maybe lean a little bit more, just a little bit into that really close relationship that he has with Celie. We did not. <laughs> we did not. They were just here. Yeah. They were, D, what, what happened? 
<laughs> they said, "Hey, we got the names. We can just use these characters as wallpaper." And that's pretty much that's pretty much it. <laughs> just some window dressing. Yeah, like there again. Um I and I don't know if any of this comes down to runtime. I'm not that to me is not really a great excuse because this film is like 2 hours and 20 minutes. Both mm -hmm. the original film and the stage musical are 2 hours and 35 minutes. So mm -hmm. if they were able to do what they did, surely with a few additional, you know, with some extra time, we yeah. could have uh, at least found some way with, you know, to flesh all this out. And I feel like there's too much that happens. Like you mm -hmm. said, um, with Squeak, which is like probably one of the darker aspects and the more shocking aspects, you know, for me reading that. Um, and even her declaration of saying she's Mary Agnes and not Squeak comes after that moment. Yeah. And, you know, it takes on a different significance. Um, but yeah, but she's very pivotal. And even like the, the, um, how she and Sophia's relationship comes full circle because she ends up taking, <laughs> uh, Sophia's willing to take care of her, um, you know, her children when she's children. off the road. So it's a yeah. different kind of dynamic there. And then what it means for, um, Harpo and Sophia and how their relationship comes, you comes know, back together after all the things yeah. that they've experienced. So, yeah, but they were just here. Like, they didn't really do anything. Like, there was no... There were no scenes to really sit with them and understand, <laughs> you know, like how they how they developed, how they grew, what their journey was. That's just yeah. one. Harpo has such a significant journey, you know, trying his best and eventually overcoming the generational curses and those stronghold influences that the father and the grandfather have passed down to him as far as how he is supposed to behave. Just he and like Celie were really, really close. It was not so much, I don't want to say maybe sister brotherly because they are uh, of a certain age, you know, she was young, but it's also in a maternal way. Like they share so many moments in the book and I was like, we just nothing. <laughs> I was I was so disappointed, and I and I felt like you know I had my expectations too high, and I was like, well maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they don't even touch on these things in the Broadway situation. Do they expand on Squeak and uh, Harpo in those type of ways in the the musical? Now those aspects, I, I will say this: we definitely get um, a little bit more than we. I'm not saying it's as much as it should have been, but from what mm -hmm. I remember, it was definitely more. Even Sophia and um, Harpo have a song together um, tour. I want to say it's like in the second act when they kind of get back together, and it's you know them kind of enjoying the, their new life now. Now that they, you know, they've gone through all this stuff, it's like they it's, and it's kind of like a happy, funny song but it shows that they've grown and now like they're back in sync again you know mm -hmm. um and so it's you know it's just kind of a fun charming song but like i said we don't even really get the the full circle of them we don't see what sure. brings them back together or just seeing what it means for him to see her go through that and then you know to come out of it and then for them to understand each other in this different way now it's just yeah missed opportunity absolutely we need a book club <laughs> we want to reread the book <laughs> Yeah, I just, this was, even even more than Harpo, like, I really thought that this was going to be, we were going to incorporate Squeak a whole lot better. And that was probably one of the biggest disappointments for me. Like, Squeak is just here to to squeak and do the same blow by blow. This here, I do join and get punched. And I was like, why? Now, uh, Disney Princess and One Who Step In. Um, <laughs> let's get into Nettie. Holly Bailey, um, for me... I loved her a lot in certain scenes and in others, it was giving Disney princess. It mm -hmm. was certain because you can tell that she's really trying to establish herself, even though she's, you know, been acting since, you know, childhood. Yeah. But it was certain moments where I was like, man, I wish they, you know, had her do that over with the octave of her voice. And it, it, her, she sounds like a damn Disney princess in <laughs> the era and the time that we are supposed to be in. Like, I write you every day. Like, it's very, you know. <laughs> Ariel, like it's very Disney. So I had a hard time kind of disconnecting that some of the times, but it was certain moments, like you said, when she was talking back to Mr. on the horse and ain't nothing pretty about my feet. I was like, all right, all right. right. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Or that, that moment when, you know, he does try to attack her and, you know, things like that. And just her, she was perfect to be, you know, that ray of sunshine, that confident, outspoken, you know, that, that, that whole thing there. But it was certain moments. It wasn't perfect for me. Certain moments I was like, oh, but getting back into like the situation with Squeak, I would have loved like five minutes to kind of fulfill uh, Nettie's journey in a way that we didn't do in 1985. Just uh, Nettie went a whole lot of places. <laughs> yes. 
nigga. If you just, you know, if you just, uh, you know, go by the the movie, you're gonna assume like, oh, she just went to Africa. Like Nettie was everywhere and very uh, well traveled, and it uh, affected her so much to just see so much beyond where they had come from. And she had grown so much, and we didn't really get into that. Even when we do go to Africa, that portion in the 1985 situation, when we do eventually go over to Africa and we incorporate those scenes and they're like interchangeables and we just, you know, interchange Africa and Georgia all at the same time. And, you know, she's sneaky reading those letters. That's like one of my favorite portions of the movie. It was so brief here. <laughs> it, it was so brief here, like with the culture and what we got with them coming in with the dancing and them arriving on the boat. I was like, Ooh, how long are we going to stay here? This cute. It was like, all right, bye. We, we just give you a little taste. <laughs> Oh, it just really didn't feel lived in for me like a lot of this movie. And then, you know, we get to the end. <laughs> Rock it, don't stop it. Everybody get on the floor. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> y'all could have called anybody. Um, This was, uh, what did we say, D? Uh, here in namesake only or uh, stunt? No, you said stunt casting. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this was definitely... A stunt cast situation along with her, like, oh, girl, we got Sierra coming in on the back end. <laughs> I laughed. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, oh, it was... um. It, it disconnected me from that scene that was supposed to be so important because you bring somebody on who, Sierra, now Sierra is a performer down, a dancer down. Actor, no. She's not, you know, a, an actress. And for something that's supposed to be so significant, I was, <laughs> deep. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go go ahead, D. How how did you feel about um Hallie and just Nettie's journey overall and you know the incorporation of her being the older Sierra at the end? <laughs> yeah. Um so yeah, with Hallie, like I said, I really enjoyed that moment. Um and I feel like, you know, I enjoyed, you know, what she was bringing like you said, we didn't get the full, you know, we didn't get the the deeper resonance of the emotions of the relationship like we could have, but like I said, that one thing with Mr. we could have gotten maybe a little more of that um but I, definitely an improvement and for everybody in the chat like i didn't dislike her in the um in the little mermaid but i also thought she was done dirty as far as the characterization just the way that entire thing was put together so that's why i said like i saw her more in her element in this role um compared to that but you know i wasn't mad at it but um but sierra um the thing is that and one thing before i say that let me also say that 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 definitely was the more disappointing aspects of this because when I saw that image in the trailer, I didn't know that was gonna be the only image of the African. Because yeah. African Homeland is one of my like one of my top songs from the musical. And it's basically um, you know, Nettie detailing her experiences, writing to her, but we also see her meeting the people and what it's like, you know, when she's dealing, you know, with the culture and all these changes and just the beauty, you know, it was like black seeing black from the first time. Not like so. Now Dang, I, I, I wouldn't go that far. You going too far? <laughs> you going I'm too going far? Sierra's <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, boo. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did somebody say it looked like she just pulled up from checkers? <laughs> it did. Somebody, <laughs> yo. You know what? <laughs> I'm not even finna entertain y'all. <laughs> y'all heard my chest. Thank you so much for the four ninety nine super chat. <laughs> Nettie pulled up like she was a chair. Boom. <laughs> I think uh like the situation with uh you know Tamala Man being the wife and um <clears throat> maybe with our like David Allen Greer or even when it came to somebody like Sierra, it's like, you know, you're only going to see them X amount of minutes. Like, does it really matter? It does. <laughs> For something as significant as the ending and them being reunited, it matters like hell. <laughs> like yeah. it, it matters. And it, it took me completely out of the moment. <laughs> I'm sorry. Not yeah. Oh, go ahead. D. Yeah. 
yeah, no, I was gonna say I remember hearing. So I, I knew about this. I heard, <laughs> um, I heard that was the case, and I still felt like that's not because you know sometimes they announce or they'll show names on the cast list, and it's sometimes it's something else other than what you thought. So I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't, um, I wasn't sure if that was. <laughs> I just like <thought>, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Arnetti and Seely from the same father. Uh, uh, yes, in the book, I believe. Yeah, because yeah, she, yeah. um, we lose the father to a lynching situation, and yeah. I believe she's pregnant with, uh, with Nettie, and you know, Seely's already here. So yes. Oh man, I. Yeah. But um, <laughs> but sorry, my point is that's a very powerful part of the story. And I think the thing is, um, and this is not a not, I don't have any issues like with Sierra personally, but I think the oh, thing yeah. is you have mm-hmm. to serve what what speak what you have to serve what um speaks to the scene and serves the emotional honesty and you know, like the the impact of the scene. And my thing is mm-hmm. you can do that with someone who who's not well known or maybe is lesser well known. You know, it could have been a, it yeah. just could have been an unknown, someone we didn't see, but we know who this character is. So, but we need the emotion. Um, like we know every time, anytime, and I know we're not supposed to be drawing comparisons, but can't help it. But in the 1985 film, when you see though the the, the yeah. purple and the red, it's like you crying. And that, oh, <laughs> and just, <laughs> the way that whole moment unfolds, and I understand it's not gonna be the same because it was already done so you know masterfully there yeah. but it's like the problem is it feels like oh snap we got sierra yeah. it didn't feel like <laughs> this is the case so that's the issue and it took people definitely in my theater were like uh <laughs> okay <laughs> nita thank you so much for the five dollar super chat david allen greer has been slept on he can actually sing he was hilarious hilarious as reverend leon Lenny 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 Lenny. Lenny. <laughs> yeah if they would have given david something to do as the father which is crazy because they there's just so much pull with the father in the 1985 and you can tell that he is indifferent with his daughter and there's just such push push and pull and he doesn't really he he doesn't say a whole lot <laughs> at all and we just weren't able to do that for david like we 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 we're pretty get into that but the let's, let's let's leave sierra i'm i'm sorry sierra. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but y'all know I, I have to be honest. But yeah, it, it took away from the scene and it wasn't as impactful. Uh, imitation Seely. <clears throat> now, personally, Fantasia was not my favorite here. Fantasia was not my favorite here. We know now we know Fantasia gonna sing house down boots. I didn't expect anything less, but I was hoping that they would incorporate writing uh her writing letters to God. There is such a significance with Celie in her letters and her writing, and it really hits home when they when, when they would have situations like uh, when Ned is leaving and she says, "You know, I'll write you every day." Like it meant so much for her to get those letters, and the fact that she didn't, and you know, she thinks her sister is dead. Like that, I really found myself missing the narration from the 1985 version yeah. because we get so much of Celie's perspective. Yes, she disappeared here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she disappeared here. Seely's journey disappeared here for me. And I was thinking with maybe Fantasia being on, on stage, you know, she gets Broadway is a totally different ball game. <laughs> you know, that emoting and getting into that emotional state in those songs and grandstanding. The, the songs were beautiful. That was great. When we got into her just being silly, it felt like such a like a poor man's imitation in my in my opinion. It was not my favorite. And she was trying so hard to appear yes. as, cause you know, she is a woman, as I said, mm-hmm. <laughs> she needed to work a little harder and you know, it's Fantasia child. It's Fantasia is very grand in personality and, you know, body and everything. So for her to look really uh, demure and docile in comparison to somebody like Coleman D'Amico as Mr. She really had to tone it down. And I felt like it went a little too far down and she disappeared from me when she was not singing the song. What about you D? <clears throat> Yeah. Um, so, I, like I said, I love Fantasia. Um, this is really her first big screen debut. Um, her first film, obviously, was uh, Life is Not a Fairy Tale, which was basically her mm-hmm. personal story on screen. And so, um, so just the fact that she's even has this opportunity, I think that's, uh, I think it's awesome. Um, I saw, like you said, where she was trying, but there were times um, where I could tell the range wasn't there, and she was kind of like stuck in one, kind of one. 
it's kind of like there was one general kind of place that she was stuck, kind of stuck in. And it's yeah. not like the emotions were absent, but it just wasn't like, it wasn't the complete sense of like rage, frustration, yeah. sadness, like down, like, like this is like my, my life is, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The songs were, the songs, because when right. she would cut into a song and then I'm like, oh, we're about to hit and maybe get a different type of Sealy. And it was, it would like, get to these certain highs and then it's just like we're right back to where we were when I was expecting for you know something else but I, I get what you're saying go go ahead D I'm sorry <laughs> you know, no no you're good um and I like I said I, I I see where um she was trying but it's like you have to it just there like I said along with the layers um of the story you have to have uh a performance that kind of gets into the layers as well. So Celie is tim timid. She's quiet. She, you know, is, is honestly like she kind of shrinks, right? But yeah. there are these moments where they we see kind of these glimpses of these other parts of her, especially like in the 1985 mm -hmm. film, that moment with, oh my gosh, even the moment uh, with Miss Celie's blues and how, you know, Whoopi plays that scene and how you see the mm -hmm. break woman acknowledging <laughs> her in public and in front of all these people who have dismissed her ignored her just and it's just like you see what it means it, it like it opens her up completely and it's such a powerful scene and like i said we don't necessarily have to be all the way there but we needed yeah. a little bit more um of, of that just bring out the emotions a little bit more you don't, you don't have to go tyler perry theatrics but i need <laughs> a little bit more from her yeah, it was nothing that um, I can't say that Fantasia did because I see that she has the capability to go there. But with the direction giving and I feel like they, you know, um, told her to be in a certain space. And I felt like they really confined her to try to kind of pipe up Coleman Domingo in the situations. With with this being PG-13, they had to set certain tones a certain way and keep them there until we got to her, you know, pretty much being emancipated. But I was like, there is so much in between there that we did not touch on at all. <clears throat> Let me see. <laughs> Thank you so much, Bill, Bill by Creatives. <laughs> see, <laughs> see when you leave, you caught up. <laughs> You get a mess. Thank you. Thank you so much for, for that for that super chat. You are on a roll. <laughs> Tara is always spicy. <laughs> Commentary always hitting. Thank thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let's see. See Sierra's uh content. Uh of course you couldn't take her seriously because you're a joke. Oh my goodness. What is with the mean spirited comments, ma'am? Oh, let me go all the way up here because that wasn't cute at all. <laughs> Sierra, Sierra would be good in a remake of Honey, the Jessica album. <laughs> Not y'all trying to put her all the way over in Honey. <laughs> you, already, you already know how I feel about Honey. <laughs> you already know how I feel about Honey. Sierra, I am so sad that you feel that way, but we should be able to share our own unsolicited opinion, whether it is, you know, black movies or not. I get like really uh <clears throat> indifferent <laughs> when we uh are expected to automatically praise everything if you have been here the entire time i don't know if you just arrived but we gave praise where praise is due and this is the portion where we are critiquing other things that we didn't like so much thank you sierra now getting uh back to uh this bottom part here <laughs> Sierra real mad. <laughs> yes, 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 Sierra was really mad. And, you know, I, I respect it. You know, everybody has their own opinions about this film. And that's why everybody has their own channel. Okay. Uh, getting into Suge. <laughs> getting into Suge. The Suge Avery infatuation. I put no selfish, promiscuous, drifting, drunk user Suge. Well, where that Suge at? We, we, we gonna let Suge forever be unscathed. Like... I, we already pretty much talked about the dynamics of their relationship and what we really wanted to get into there. We talked about Taraji being just really, really great at singing these songs. But I feel like Taraji could have pushed this so far if they would have let her go there. Like, if they would have let her go there and really represent Suge, I feel like they took that little scene where we do see that she is entangled <laughs> with Mr. And, you know, it's like, oh, they're not them getting down and dirty in the living room. Let me go put these tiles in the cabinet. And we just kind of left it there. Suge is a certain type of woman, especially for this era. And I would have loved to dive more into that. And I feel like it would have served Taraji so much more for us to go in that direction. What, mm -hmm. what about you, B? 
<laughs> yeah, um, I think again, there are layers to Suge as well. Um, that's really JB, that was actually Taraji singing. Um, which um, I also say I was a little back and forth on as far as the tone of her voice. There are times at work, there was times where I wanted a little more stank. Um, <laughs> but in addition to that, um, uh, yeah, I just think like there, I'm trying to think. I, I don't feel like we saw um, what a mess she was, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And kind of like the nuances of her. And even just like, I feel like there was just, there's a lot to Suge and the fact that she is like, she's beautiful, she's vivacious, she's glamorous, but she's also broken, she's dysfunctional, yeah. she's a drunk, like she has all these yeah. different layers to her. And I just think a lot of it was just kind of one, for me, a lot of the character was in one lane. I understand what they tried to do with the moment with her dad, but even that, like, what was the build up to that? No, don't don't even get QD because when the way they disrespected uh, uh -huh. God is trying to tell you something, I was like, what? <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> 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 what was that? This pathetic rendition of God. Like, not even because to Roger, I thought those are such soaring scenes. It felt like they took away. From that 1985, certain things. And I was like, oh, y'all could have left that on the ground. Why didn't you take away the other stuff that we love? Y'all could have took those things away. Y'all took away so many of the important things, or even the the significance of the uh, Miss Seely's blues. I was like, we we didn't have time to explore Suge in the way I thought. We, we had time to go to Suge's house and see the look. I was like, yeah, that's, that's what y'all wanted to do. <laughs> we had time, you know, to for Grady to sing it, girl, and go to Suge's house and. I was like, this time could have been spent elsewhere. Even that long rendition of like Shug's in town or the whole situation when she first arrives and everybody's, you know, like, oh, hide your man, hide your, hide your wife. Shug's here. <laughs> she about to thot it up. We could have, you know, spent that really exploring other sections of Suge Avery's character because Suge, Suge is a special person. <laughs> and I wish we, we got we got to some of that, you know, that, but that's that's good. D, D what, what, what about you? Anything else on Suge? <laughs> um, not too much else. All I will say, and this, 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 this is going to be it. Um, I feel like I gave a very clear and concise reason as to why Sierra's performance didn't work for me like i said it didn't serve the emotions. The <laughs> it's okay we it just it didn't it didn't serve the emotions of the scene it felt more like having a name versus like let's sink into the emotions of this if it works for you then i'm i'm happy for you um and i hope you will you know i think you'll you should focus on the fact that she's beautiful talented has a great husband beautiful family but as far as her <laughs> her role and her moment in this scene it didn't work for me and that's not going to change but i appreciate the fact that you feel comfortable enough to leave your commentary we can just i love, I love how passionate i love how passionate yeah. sierra is about Absolutely. Sierra. I like that. yeah <laughs> and we can agree to disagree without infl inflammatory commentary so we can go on to the next thing <laughs> <Let's move on. laughs> I love the D. I just love this whole thing. I'm having a wonderful time. <laughs> I'm having a wonderful time. But getting uh here, I believe we are coming up on um mm -hmm. <laughs> restraining Mister. I've seen better from Coleman Domingo. Now y'all know I love me some, you know, whatever you know Jonathan's going through over there. The majors, he going through stuff. I love me an actor who could act. <laughs> I love me a black acting man who can act. Coleman Domingo is one of those people. Once again, getting back to that PG-13 rating, I was like, ooh, if y'all would have just let him go off. Like, if y'all would have just let him, not saying that I want him to be, you know, we want to hate him. Y'all wanted to see a black woman get beat down and y'all want to see... That's not it. That's absolutely right. not it. Though There are so many layers between Mr. from the book, I'm sure Mr. from the Broadway situation, and the Mr. Uh, that we got in 1985. Mm -hmm. They, I felt like they focused so much on trying to keep it at a certain, like, all right, all right, that's too much. Now, don't, now you only get two slaps in the circle, uh, you know, <laughs> an hour later. You only, you know, it's just, <laughs> they were trying to be really strategic where to um, keep it at a certain temperament with him. So we would have like explosive moments of, you know, don't touch the mailbox and then it'll go like it was i just wanted to see mr being mr but it seems like they were more focused on like we want y'all to dislike him but you know not not too much on on mr you know that, that's what it felt what it felt like to me what, what about you Dave? 
Yeah, I enjoy Coleman Domingo. Um, I think just in general, that man has a lot of swagger <laughs> in general. And I think that <laughs> when it comes to period pieces, he has like the look and just like he yes. he like he fits so perfectly into like these like what was it um Ma Rainey's Black Bottom he was Justin mm -hmm. Rustin and the Butler that was the first time I saw him so like he kind of has the the vibe um and just kind of the I don't know he just he fits so well there um I don't know if he like I it's like I enjoyed his performance on on, mm -hmm. on one hand but then I also don't know if he had the um the kind of the menacing aspect of his character down. And I think there were times where we couldn't fully, um, I don't want to say take him as seriously, but I don't know who was that same sense of dread that was mm -hmm. present. That's why I was also speaking to Dion Coles. Cause even with the the short brief, the that brief runtime, we kind of got a little bit of like, oh, all right. And I wanted <laughs> a little more of that and seeing a little bit more of, of Celie's, you know, trepidation and that genuine like, yeah. oh, okay. Like walking on pins and needles. Yeah. Um, and, I think that I appreciate the fact that they ex expand uh, more on uh, Mister's redemption. Um, I just needed a little bit more kind of mm -hmm. connected to that because that is a part of the book, um, and I think that also throws people off because um, they're yeah. like, uh, he's like <laughs> "What? Yeah, like what's, what's, what's going on? And why are they suddenly become cool?" Because that is in the book, and a part of it is just yeah. Mister having to understand like his life, his reality. He has to finally take. Yeah. Ability for hit the failure he's been as a parent, as a man, in mm -hmm. so many ways. And yeah. that's why they're able to get to that place. But I understand why they didn't do that in the 1985 film, because I think it would have been too hard for people to wrap their yeah. minds around, like, excuse me? You yeah, know? I love the, you know, what's understood doesn't have to, you know, be explained. And he's kind of, you know, in the distance with his little horse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there's, you know, no reconciliation. Whereas we have here, if you are not at all familiar with the book and you see them like, chatting it up over Easter dinner. You're like, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> like, how dare you have a forgive or abuser? This is sick. All the like, all the, it, it, it's, it's a little jarring, but I, um, I just, I just know what he's capable of. And I didn't feel like we were able to reach those heights here. And it also really felt like we were more, uh, female focused here with our female characters, you know, right. respectfully, like this is the book is a lot of that, but if we would have just, you know, let him rock, <laughs> let him rock just a little bit, mm -hmm. it, it would have given so much. And it says a whole lot that we are equating the brief moments that we got with Alfonso being, you know, more menacing than the entirety of what we got with Mr. But yeah. Comey Domingo is always going to be a really, really great actor. And yeah, that, that happens in the book, y'all. They reconcile in the book. And I was I was thinking when he came in and I think he asked like, you know, you want to, uh, you know, hang out sometime. I was like, no, I think didn't he like propose to her in the book? From what I remember. <laughs> yeah, I think he had proposed to her like, you know, we could settle like what it was. They were really like here. And then we have that dynamic with Suge like. I love in the, in the uh, that 1985 when she brings her little eyes married nine. He, they're toasty. He's like, you had a your way and I had a mine. He and Celie kind of have that situation happening. Like, you know, if there's anybody who can understand the torture and the torment I'm maybe going through with loving and wanting Suge and Suge being Suge, it's Mr. Regardless of how I feel about you, that's something we have in common. And you love her just as much as I do. Like, there's just such a Kendrick thing ha happening and it makes sense as to why, you know what, after everything, we sit down having dinner, but we don't really just get that here. It's just like, you know, I brought you a picture of sugar, you know, I'm going to buy these shiny pants from you and uh, see you at dinner. Like, it was <laughs> right. And, <laughs> yeah. And I was also going to say one thing that would have helped. Um, there is a very important number um, in the musical called Miss Seeley's Curse. And it is, mm -hmm. it is, you know, it is Mister's big number, and he basically is recounting the fact that this is what happened when I was young. This is what happened when I got to this age. This is what happened here. This mm -hmm. is what happened. Here. This is what happened. And then yeah. him realizing that, you know, maybe all, you know, maybe everything good for me lies ahead of me, and it's going to require something, not just some, to say something, but actually do something. You know, like he has to understand, like, okay. Not just um, the curse, but also just understanding like what his life has been. He's like, okay, I, I gotta be. I'm gonna have to be accountable. I recognize what I have been through, and I'm gonna have to make some change to go forward. And I think that was missing. Like they had the scene where he like is in, you know, falls down and is raining, but the song yeah. was the best Dramatic. moment. Where they <laughs> 
very, very dramatic. I was like, oh, y'all got them little water machines working up there, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> On them sets, child. It was making it rain. But uh, him bringing the sisters back, uh, it was certain things that I was like, man, I wish we could have reworked. Like the fact that we, when we have, you know, them do the 1985 situation and have Celie come back for Alfonso's. Like, I was like, I was really hoping that we would get that that moment in the book where she goes to um, confront Alfonso and ask, you know, are you my father? And they have yeah. that really like, just Celie really stepping into who she is. Or even... um. I was like, why we just couldn't have uh, Nettie reveal like in the the book that mm-hmm. st- Paul, not Paul. This is that was not that was never you know our father in the letters and use that time elsewhere instead of you know how he died on top of me. Right? We we we, we, <laughs> <laughs> we absolutely didn't need that. There were so many windows and pockets to just explore totally different things. So this could be its own separate situation to where you're not even thinking about, you know, 1985. You're like, oh, I didn't, I didn't even know that. So many people have not read the book. And I just, mm-hmm. <sighs> I was passionate, y'all. I'm sorry. <laughs> let, me leave. <laughs> let me leave. But I think just kind of uh, finishing this off here with, uh, just where I where I was and I really couldn't find the images I wanted for the scenes that I felt like mm-hmm. were like missed and held a totally different meaning here so I use you know the old throwback movie uh robbed us by rushing let's get into this movie rushing mm-hmm. <laughs> it the the main thing suffering here you know whether they you know did too much of the 1985 version or not or the, the a lot of the songs they rushed so much of the moments I wanted to sit in. I put yes. in no sister of mine because, child, where? I wasn't here for them singing it in Shug's living room. I really wasn't. <laughs> I really wasn't. It just didn't, you know, hold the same pool. And it was just, you know, all right, it's time for another musical number, which I'm here. I was absolutely here for Taraji singing. I think she did a really great job. But I needed I needed to sit in these moments, D. Like, like, what about you? Because I know how much this moment means to me in the audience and Celie, but we don't get this here in the movie. We do get, you know, her performing, push the button. And I think they were trying to replace this with her kind of ignoring Albert and the juke joint. And immediately, I think she hugs Celie. And I was like, what the hell? <laughs> but yeah, that, that, that didn't do it for me. What about you? Yeah, um, you have to have the time and, and this is in a different way than what I mentioned with the choreography, but I feel like you have to have time to like sit in, in moments and sit yeah. in the emotions and just feel it, let it settle in. And I feel like there was obviously no time. And I'm not saying the 15 minutes, I mean, it would have done something. I mean, there would have been a little bit more of something. Um, it wouldn't have fixed everything, but it definitely would have mm-hmm. helped. And my issue with uh, Miss Seeley's blues, like I said, is that the emotional context is completely removed when you have her just singing, singing it to her after they're, uh, I believe it's in Memphis, at her mm-hmm. house. She's already gotten away from Mister, <laughs> and it's just like sister, yeah. sister. And what I heard, which actually makes sense, um, basically Quincy Jones said like, okay, I, you know, I wrote this song for the original and I'm a producer, so you should put the, the song in the movie. Yeah, and I <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, okay, well, that's great, but it does nothing for this film narratively, so there was no point. <laughs> I see y'all in the chat talking about Seeley's Breakfast. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't, you know, as drawn out as the uh, the scene in the 1985, you know, Seeley making that good old Southern breakfast, but we that do- That breakfast get, is no joke. <laughs> <laughs> we do, you know, get a brief moment of Albert trying to bring her to Burt's situation. And I saw that a lot too, where people were like, you know, I can appreciate this more. Not only is it PG-13, but unlike the 1985, this one's funny. I was like, which one y'all watch? There right. are so many comedic beats. Yeah. <laughs> and that old one that would, that would like really, really have me shouting. But I like, even with this, I was like, I would, would, would love for them to explore, um, Cause I don't think, I don't think they actually like physically get together until after Suge is, is married now. Right. Do they? I can't, I can't remember. It's been oh, a minute. Since been, yeah. Does uh, Celie and Suge, they, when they uh, initially like for the first time really get intimate, it's not until she returns, you know, that second time and she's married. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Great. I was like, yeah, even with that and their relationship really taking it to that level to where it's no longer just, you know, love, physical. In fact, it's like absolutely physical. And they're in a real relationship and Suge like leaves to go uh, have herself a time with, with, a, with a young band member. I was like, what, 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 what we can get into that? 
<laughs> why can't we get into that and you know the toll that that took on uh because a lot of the story isn't just solely about Seely, you know, getting beyond Mister. It's also with her getting beyond Shug and realizing that she can stand on her own and she doesn't need anybody. And uh, you know, let me let me just go to the end, y'all. <laughs> let me just go to the end and just be satisfied with what we got, you know, like CMC. But um, just the the last situation here. These were also moments here that I felt were so rushed in the in the movie and i've seen many uh reviews i'm gonna have more watchers after we're finished here because i didn't want to spoil nothing but they're like oh i just love uh you know nettie getting you know separated and how how quick it was and you know it wasn't long and drawn out like it is now i'm not saying i want to see mr slapping their hands off of a tree i'm not saying i don't want him see him push nettie in the dirt but we linger in these moments because they hold weight it means something for us later and with them being rushed, like I have that here. Of course, I have the dinner table scene here. It was even though Danielle was Danielle and right. <laughs> it, was, it was, you know, rushed. Also, you know, what you like, it was all of this was so rushed. Like I, I miss these moments. I think if we would have, even if they wanted to do it in their own way or be faithful to the Broadway situation, we still needed to revel in these moments because it means so much for from us for, you know, the beginning all the way to the ending when they are reconciled. Like the fact that them being reconciled was just like, oh, okay, well, Sierra's here. I was like, this is supposed to be everything. I'm supposed to be crying. <laughs> I'm supposed to be, you know, living for this moment. What I did like about it is that we didn't have them be, you know, uh, older than a back dirt country road as they got to, you know, when they finally <laughs> got to see each other again. <laughs> I did like that. Or I think Sophia gets like half the time in jail that she got. I think she got like six years here. Like it, 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 they did, you know, make subtle changes, but or even, um, because I was looking like uh, Sophia's eyes, she still looked the same, you know, after she got out. They didn't make her look, you know, just so worn and battered down and all of that good stuff. But that didn't mean nothing to me when we couldn't hit where I needed them to hit me the most. What about you, Dave? Yeah. Um, another thing I thought, and I said this in my review too, but it was it was kind of like what I love about, um, and what I love about this film and what I love about films like it, you know, the two hour and 30 minute, two hour and 40 minute, you know, three hour mm -hmm. films, um, depending on what the scope of the story is. But usually like, I like seeing the passage of time and usually you can yeah. feel like how oppressive sometimes the passage of time can be. Cause it's like, by the time we get it, like to a certain point, the characters have been beat up, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> they have been through it and they look worn out. You know what I'm saying? And even when things get better, you can see that age and all that stuff is, you know, it's taking a toll on them. And yeah. I don't feel like we got that same sense of, uh, you know, of, of time passing. Um, yeah. I also, because the same thing with, um, and because it, it's a very, um, you know, it's a very difficult moment to see um, what happens to Sophia, but it's even worse when you see her in, you know, in that scene in, in the jail, yeah. you realize she's aged, her yeah. eyes, she can't see, can't really see out of the one eye and just yeah. what's happened to these, how their lives have been shaped in, in all these years and all these things that have gone on. And I think that's something we needed also. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's just like we didn't have, we just didn't get to see, even like the idea of where Seely gets to um, at that point, like where she pulls the knife and all that and the resentment, yeah. all those things that have been building, you understand, well, even shoot, that whole, which clearly they weren't going to do here or couldn't come close to that. But like when that whole shaving scene is such a, oh, man. and like, <laughs> cool, because it's just like, it is an intense yeah. moment. And you can see, like, when Celie walks towards him, you can mm -hmm. see death <laughs> in yeah. her eyes. That uh, tied into Shug running, you know, yes. anticipating, like, because, you know, she's the letter, and it's like, uh, she could just feel like something was afoot. Like, mm -hmm. it, there's so much intensity in, in that version. Even though y'all feel like the, the scenes, some of you feel like the scenes are drawn out and too long, it works. <laughs> It works and it it just it just it just means so much. And yeah, the, I was so mad. I was like, I thought we was gonna just live in the, in this shaving scene, and then it was it was also kind of you know sped up for time, and it was just like, oh, I, I was married, and I was like, oh, we I was married, not mixing with the shave scene. Oh, I, I right. for that. All right, I, that's cool, that's cool if that, this is what y'all doing, but that that anticipation and that 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 true build up, like I needed that 
opposed to uh, Coleman Domingo's character, just seal it. I was like, it was, it was a lot of him just yelling her name. Like, you know, where are you? Normally you're at my beck and call, but now like you're pretty, even um how quickly they found those letters. I was like, well, damn, if she would have just, <laughs> if she would have you would just open the closet up. You know, all the music. <laughs> just, where, you was, know, the... where was the rat trap? <laughs> <laughs> the the little the little details like that matter even though i i believe in the book they were like concealed away in a trunk but just for them to just be like you know let me lift up this hunting gun like oh here they are i was like okay <laughs> it's just it's just you've just been there this whole time or just you know the subtle things of us seeing mr like hide the letters the the thing that i love about that first one is we really don't know what he did with the letters we never just know until you know, she gets them, even though we feel it like in here, oh, he putting them letters up, he's hiding them. We know she's getting them, but we never see him physically do anything with them. So just that brief moment of, you know, him sticking it and hiding it from her. I was like, I don't want to see that. <laughs> and I don't want to see that. But yeah, them letters being like right under her nose this whole time. I'm like, girl, if you would have opened the hallway closet, you, you could have read your sister's letters all this time. But it's like, <laughs> all right. Thank you. Thank you so much for <laughs> Thank you so much for the for the super train. <laughs> they got Nettie and the kids clothes from Ross in this film. What is you, what is you talking about? <laughs> I'm absolutely not dealing with y'all. Thank you so much for the super <laughs> oh gosh um thank you thank you yes polly absolutely we will be getting together tomorrow hey chat please join struggles um on the slant live tomorrow i will be making a post for it, you guys so be all on my community tab to be here and we're gonna be talking about the best films from uh this year and what we like child my list short but oh, i'm gonna be there <laughs> i'm absolutely gonna be there thank you so much for the super chat polly yeah it um I yeah the, the the letters took me out but but like you said these are you know the moments that we you know really needed to live in the dinner table scene the the shaving scene her being separated from her sister I really didn't want to look at that important dinner table scene and as soon as they started I was comparing it to you know the old and I was like oh I'm doing the scene I'm doing a disservice to supposed to be you know Fantasia and Coleman Domingo this and then I was like child this just ain't close but you know no cigar but <laughs> wrapping it up here you guys y'all funny this shit i ain't even putting that on the screen yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not but you know wrapping it up and pretty much uh getting to the end here d you have been absolutely great uh will this movie stand the test of time for you i now for me personally not quite but maybe mm -hmm. It's. It, I feel like it'll give people, at least in some way, a, a link to appreciate the original uh, stage musical and kind of have some of that experience. Um, mm -hmm. I think that it maybe could possibly stand the test of time in that way. I don't. But I think the thing is, like, there are different. Like, there are all kinds of films that are remade. There are all kinds of films that are readapted. Little Women has been adapted like eight, well, like I don't know, like twelve different times. <laughs> yes. Yes. Jane Eyre. Uh, there are so many different uh, Christmas Carol. There are so many stories that have been done again, 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 again. and everyone has their one or one that hits differently. Um, mm -hmm. And you could argue about the differences and what works and what doesn't. Um, and I appreciate the fact that this was trying to stand out because unlike what some folks are saying in the chat, I was very excited for this. It, it, <laughs> <laughs> who has seen the musical um because i'm like no give me i want to uh, it's been so long let me see this i want to see these songs uh not straightening up <laughs> <laughs> and she would be cleaning that house like she said she was she would have found them damn letters a long time ago Bill. <laughs> Girl, if you would have dusted a little bit deeper you could have found them letters and been been done with mrs ass a long time ago <laughs> i'm sick of y'all <laughs> <laughs> Go yes. ahead. <laughs> yes, Joshua. Also, a raisin in the sun. Oh, a raisin in the sun. Of, that's another example where everyone has one that hits for them a certain <laughs> way. So I'm not saying it's not possible for there to be more than one. Oh, I'm not OG Sydney Portier all day, honey. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> but I think because the uh, 1985 film has, I don't know, has like stood the test of time for so long. Um, mm -hmm. And because it's been so iconic and because this didn't lean fully into everything that distinguishes itself 
from the 1985 film, you know, like the stage musical does, that was where the issue kind of came for me. It's like, give us something we did not see. It just feels like a pale imitation, even though you're trying. We understand yeah. you're like trying to incorporate, but go all the way there. Don't just settle for, you know, either go all the way there, either push for it or um, don't do it at all. And mm -hmm. um, I feel like there's just, there are certain things um, just even with the emotional context of certain scenes that kind of get lost with, with this yeah. execution. Even it's, uh, again, which was a, another missed opportunity, but when Seely sings, I'm here, that is yeah. a result in the musical of Seely, of uh, Suge uh, wanting to go off with this young guy. And she's like, okay, hey, yeah. let me have this, this last fling. And then, mm -hmm. you know, we can be together. And she's like, eh. And that is her final kind of like, hey, even though you've kind of been the great love of my life, I have to kind of get to a place where I understand like I'm enough who I am and my life and, and me being here, not even you, you know, can can underscore the reality of who I am and, and what that means in my life now, why it's such a powerful moment. Not to say she still doesn't sing down, but it's like, yeah. it just happens because Mr. shows up and it's like, yeah. Right. <laughs> but I, I will say I did like the fact that I could watch this uh this version with my kids. Right. <laughs> it yeah. does, you know, serve a purpose to, you know, maybe um, but I don't know what that was for. My daughter was like, Oh, they they remade this. I'm like, when you watch the color purple, girl. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's too much. I was like, Oh, okay, I'm late. Right. <laughs> but, I did. This is uh, something for the people who respectfully like I'm not here for everything that took place in the 1985 version. Like this is very color purple light. I don't know why a lot of you guys have disdain for musicals. I love a good musical. I, do too. <laughs> I, I love a good musical. So I was absolutely here for that. Also, there are some things in this movie that will make me go and rewatch it. Will I hold it to the same standard of the 1990s? That's like classic stamp you know that's always going to have a, a special place so this is never going to be that for me or you know replace anything but there is enough here for me to find value in it to want to rewatch it and you know catch certain things am i you know 100 happy with the film you know clearly from this breakdown no we're, we're not <laughs> <laughs> absolutely not but there are things to be taken away here i love you know anytime we get an all black cast together sierra yes. <laughs> i'm here for it <laughs> i'm absolutely here for it i'm here for the opportunities especially in the day and age where we have people like your taraji p henson's going up and saying you know we're, we're not paid you know all these if, if it's not her it's monique if it's not monique then it's viola like mm -hmm. so for here and i'm assuming and i'm assuming i don't know since it's oprah our girls got paid i don't know i'm hoping that they got paid right. <laughs> I haven't really just looked into that, but just I'm here for Taraji being able to show her diversity and her vocal capa capability. I was here for Fantasia just getting more of a spotlight on her and what she can do. I'm hoping that they bring her on to do future projects with acting because I can see Fantasia acting and really getting in her bag with other roles that isn't, you know, Seely or whatever or any of that. And Dan Danielle, just we just need more Danielle, okay? <laughs> On all fronts, <laughs> ever since you know Orange is the New Black, she has always been someone that I have wanted to see more. But is this, you know, the grand top tier? Oh, I love this much. No, it, it is not that. But I do value it for what they try to do. Yes, Tyra loves black people. I really do. <laughs> I really, really, really do. I really do. I'm, I'm gonna finish you off, Sierra. Let's see. I just wish black people would stop turning everything into something to laugh at, to laugh about. Uh, not a single white person has said uh, Sierra took the... You really like uh, Sierra. <laughs> I thought this was, you know, about the movie as a whole. Respectfully, Sierra. I, I love Sierra, child. <laughs> I grew up on Sierra. The first Thank CD you. I ever bought out the store was the evolution of Sierra, okay? I love me some Sierra, but just like with Sierra and uh, Beyonce, I also know what their strong suits are. And it is musically and performance wise, acting not so much. So if you are in a movie of this caliber and this type of role, even though it was short, that's supposed to hold so much significance. I love to see it. I love that she got this opportunity, but absolutely took me out. And it's gonna take me out again when I watch it for the third time. But this has been awesome. <laughs> the screen <laughs> um, I'm, I'm also happy to hear that um the opinions of white people are, is the, mm -hmm. that's the barometer here for, for our standard I'm, I'm very happy to hear that especially this talented all-black cast 
<laughs> yes, I was here. I'm here for this. And I'm hoping in the future we don't, because, you know, we get one every year. It's like we get one all black cast movie every year. Like, I'm hoping that this, with this movie being so successful, we have more situations like this and more things to critique, because I'm going to critique it. <laughs> but, Dean, you have been, you know, absolutely awesome. You guys in the chat has, you know, have been great. Thank you so much for the likes. And, you know, we almost got, you know, I think like 160 people in here, which is awesome. D, I am going to give you the screen so you can tell the people what you do over there on your channel, what's coming up, where to find you, and why they need to get over there and support you. Go ahead. <laughs> so, hey, everyone. Once again, this is D, movie man, fellow cinephile, popcorn addict, and emerging film critic coming to you all with reliable recaps, reviews, and reactions. And that is what I do over at my channel. Um, I, talk, I discuss movies. I give reviews. I do the occasional trailer reaction. I'm behind on those, but I need to do some more. Um, I discuss uh, certain, I do recaps for certain theories. And now um, I recently did Queen Charlotte, about to finish The Gilded Age, really great series. Uh, I love period uh, slash costume dramas. Um, so I'll be knocking that out. And I'm getting back on board um, with the films. Took a little bit of a hiatus, but I'm trying to get back in with American fiction, uh, with poor things. Uh, there's so much out there that I need to um, catch up on. And there are so many films that are coming out. But yes, please feel free to check out um, for my more specific thoughts along with what I've said. Um, you can check out my review and any other review you see right here. And I will also... Um, be joining uh, a couple of live streams um, that are upcoming uh, with a good friend of mine. So just uh, feel free to like, uh, like, comment, subscribe, check me out. Um, you can also find me on Instagram, D Movie Man, Twitter, uh, D Movie Man Two. Um, you can also find me on Letterbox, and is that it? Yes, all the socials. But mainly, you can find me right here on YouTube at uh, Capital D Period Space Capital M O V I E. M A N, thank you so much for all the support. I would love to have you. And that's on Suge Avery. Y'all heard what he said. <laughs> Get over there <laughs> and show him some love. Please, please, please. Like, I love D as a content creator and what he do what he does over there. Like, I cannot wait for him to blow up because I told him it's coming. But we got some more super chats. Y'all, y'all is really like, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Built by creative said, I got some coins tonight. You know what? Not you spending coins to be messy. Sierra saying promise to Seely. They cut the scene. Just kidding. You know, okay. You know, I'm... <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, I'm... look at here. Look at here. You stop. Stop. I thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much for that, Bill. Bill, 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 Bill. <laughs> you you have really uh made my night with these with these hilarious comments. <laughs> thank you so much. I, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank, I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed the show. Thank you so much for that five dollar super chat. You guys have been absolutely awesome. As far as I am concerned, uh be on the lookout for my Romeo Must Die review that is coming up soon. Along with um the Warriors, someone paid for Warriors, so we're gonna get into that. You know that '70s classic. We're gonna talk about that, and I also have um the reviews I do with uh VKJ TV, where we discuss raising Canaan coming up also, and of course tomorrow I will be on the Latino Slant with Polly. Be on my community tab for that. Y'all know YouTube don't notify y'all like that. So if you're not on the community tab, if you have an Instagram, go over and subscribe to that so you can always know when I'm coming out with new stuff. But this has been absolutely awesome. Thank you guys so much for chatting with us for this long. Like we we had a steady hundred plus people for two hours. This is amazing. Y'all was cute tonight. <laughs> y'all were absolutely cute. But anything else, D, before we get out of here? No, that is pretty much it. I, oh, I'll say this. Um, I really hope that if nothing else, um, or even in addition to the success of this film, but I hope it definitely, um, hopefully, hopefully it inspires another revival or another, you know, national tour. And for all the folks who didn't get to have that experience, hopefully they can, you know, bring it back out and people can get the yeah. full, you know, experience there. And not to say that they didn't, you know, they didn't try their best. I'm just saying, but I want people to see the full extent of them taking the novel, taking, um, and the fact that even the lyrics have actual, you know, dialogue and lines from the book 
within the songs and just the way they they take that medium to a different um, level on the stage. So I'm definitely uh, hoping for that. I, I would really love for people to be able to see that and have that experience as well. Absolutely, D. I'm on board. Ask for someone who never, like, I wasn't checking for nobody's Color Purple musical. After mm -hmm. this movie, I was like, oh, I really want to see it. I want all the context. I want all the details that we didn't get here. So I absolutely feel you on that. But D and I would definitely see you guys next time. You, has, you guys have a great night. Go and check him out on all of his platforms as well as support me tomorrow on Polly's channel. Good night, guys. Thank you.